the British. I mean, the Nittany Lions are coming, of course, off of a bye week. But as they take on the UMass Minutemen coming up here next live on the Big Ten Network, first 3.30 game of the season for the Blue and White. These are, in fact, my live watch long reactions, so thank you for tuning in and listening. As always, I'm your host, Encyclopedia Sports, Coin Luke 96 Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below. Scroll down and check out Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Hit that red subscribe button. Notification button next to it live right here on YouTube as well to stay up to date. Thumbs up button if you're hoping for a Penn State win this homecoming Saturday. Share, hashtag college football, hashtag UMass, hashtag Penn State. Chat questions and comments, super chat, super sticker, super like, super thanks. Always get appreciated as well. As this video is powered by Rogue Energy, Hope Cave Thrifts, and Dead and Hungry. First off with Rogue Energy, be sure to get your favorite energy and hydration flavors in can or tub form. Shakers and Rogue Energy merch at the link in the description below. Be sure to use the code LUKE, that's L-U-K-E, LUKE123, for 10% off. Hope K Thrifts, a secondhand resale shop that focuses on sustaining the environment in a cheap and fashionable way, as most items are $20 or less and include brands like American Eagle, Converse, Free People, and Shine, among others. Hope K Thrifts found on Depop, Instagram, Macari, and Poshmark at, you guessed it, Hope K Thrifts. That's H O P E. K T H R I F T S. So be sure to use the message seller code Cheap Thrifts, C H E A P T H R I F T S, Cheap Thrifts for 10% off as well. Link also in the description below. And now also uh, powered by Dead and Hungry, a hot off the press novel written by Nathan D. Mitchell, uh, found on Amazon for $4.99. As a viral disaster sweeps across America while Hank Broadman and his family are at Hightower Amusement Park. As society crumbles, Hank must guide his nine-year-old daughter, Sarah, through a treacherous, scathing new world. Victims of the virus bleed from the eyes, becoming faster and more violent with long nails and teeth. Their skin breaks out in hives while they utter strange phases, phrases. Excuse me, A shadow of who they once were. Because, of course, if something happens like that, well, yeah, you're going to be the uh, completely different and shadow of who they once were once more. Um, as Hank uncovers um, the virus's origin, because he was a former virologist, being a former virologist, Hank uncovers the virus's origin and how it came to be. But it's just not people. Plants and animals alike fall victim to this dreadful disease. The trees turn black, bleeding sap, while their snake-like roots wrap around all remaining life. Grass turns dry and red, and animals of all kind become rabid beasts. Hank must fight at all costs to protect his daughter, once more Sarah, who is uh, nine years old, uh, whose innocence uh, degrades with each turn of a page. With no hope in sight, uh, Hope K. Thrifts once more. Uh, secondary cell shop folks on staying in the environment, cheap and fashionable way. Most items, $20 or less, include brands like American Eagle Converse, Free People and Shine, among others. Hope K. Thrifts found on Depop, Instagram, Macari, and Poshmark at once more. You guessed it, Hope K. Thrifts. But with no hope in sight and dead and hungry, Hank must uh, take matters into his own hands, piecing together clues regarding the source of the lethal virus. From mysterious radio messages to evidence of the Pentagon, the rumors of a cure, Hank slowly realizes what he must do to bring this to an end. The more he learns of this wretched sickness, the faster he sheds his own humanity, desperate to save himself and his little girl from a world in ruin. So, Rogue Energy, Hope K Thrifts, and Dead and Hungry. Be sure to go check them out in the links uh, in the description below uh, for 10% uh, off and uh, to purchase the once more Hot Off the Press novel written by Nathan D. Mitchell. Just came out this past Monday. Uh, on Amazon for $4.99. And uh, I'll leave you with this. If that doesn't interest you, uh, you might as well be what the title of the, the novel says. And that is, of course, Dead and Hungry. But thanks for tuning in and listening to my audio-only college football, UMass, Penn State, live watch long reactions. 
uh, live right here on YouTube. As always, I'm post Encyclopedia Sports, Kuwem Duke 96 once more. As these noon games uh, wrap up, we're going to be kicking off the uh, 3.30 window here uh, momentarily. But uh, no matter what, I repeat, no matter what, throw it deep with today's all-time quarterback, Corey Geiger. And, of course, if you don't know what I'm referring to, please go check out uh, Penn State football head coach James Franklin's uh, weekly press conference uh, from this past week, and um, you'll be thinking to yourself, what the hell did I just watch? But um, as though the places you'll go, there's fun to be done, there are points to be scored, there are games to be won, and the magical things you can do with that ball will make you the winningest winner of all as Penn State is 5-0 hosting 1-6 UMass uh, coming up once more next on the Big Ten Network. Um, but just win, baby. It d- doesn't matter, um, you know, if it's by one point, ten points. I mean, of course, they've won um, officially, look at the stat, ten straight games by at least 14 points or more. UMass, their six losses – uh, have come by an average of 18 points. So keep that in mind. Uh, weather's going to be a factor today as it's been raining nonstop for the past 12 hours or so. Um, but yeah, just one baby. Of course, not for UMass. They can dream on, even though that's probably why Bill Burr uh, performed at the BJC, the British Jordan Center, last week, uh, helping scout the Nittany Lions. But uh, I heard from a little birdie, uh, Steve Korinaki. Uh, he said Penn State. 99% chance to win this game here today. Blue and white, 42-point favorite uh, with the over-under set at 55. Um, Penn State should be able to maintain their average, I think, with the statistics today because what they're averaging uh, offensively, defensively, even on special teams, um, UMass is giving up that exactly and then some. But I, I think the question is today that I have, who's, who's going to be the spark to – the Stumpy's uh, dynamite with the weather the way it is once more. It's about mid 40s, um, 50 if uh, lucky enough. Uh, finally feels like fall. Uh, leaves are starting to fall. Hopefully, Penn State's putting up uh, that many points, um, just like they did on UMass uh, in the only previous meeting between these two schools back in uh, 2014. Uh, my freshman year, James Franklin's first year. Uh, as head coach, but um, yeah, it's been raining um, for the past 12 hours or so um, per- pretty steadily, uh, and it should, I would think, um, maintain what it's done uh, since you know middle of last night until to now, till now um, because it's supposed to keep raining uh, up until tomorrow morning. I mean, it might hold off, you know. Might die down a little bit, if you will, around halftime in the second half. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, it's been raining, so we'll see how much the weather affects the game. Of course, it's the second consecutive home game. Um, their Pilgrim Penn State's had to deal with the rain. Of course, they shot on Iowa um, in the whiteout uh, a few weeks back, of course. Then played at Northwestern, and now the blue and white coming off the bye week. Um not an off week, but a bye week. Uh, so we'll, we'll see if you can't see me. Of course you can. It's audio only today. Thanks for tuning in. But, um, I mean, you know, yeah, I see the players clearly just because of the rain. But, you know, the way technology is nowadays, you won't even be able to tell it. it's raining. Um, but it's just not this game. It's from the Midwest to the East Coast. Um, I'm no Joe Murgo, but... Um, I mean, you look outside, it's raining. That's what it's doing. So, um, yeah, it's been raining, like I said, about 12 hours now. Continue throughout the entire game. We'll see. So I did look at the um, hour by hour recently, potentially around halftime into the second half. It, it might die down a little bit. But just overall, I mean, you still got to play with the weather the way it is. You know, first off, I don't know if you've ever seen the rain. But, you know, with the run game. Can you run it, let alone stop it, and then turnovers? As the Penn State offense, uh, they have yet to turn the ball over. Uh, the defense um, has a plus 11 
a turnover margin, which is currently best in the country, uh, as they're taking on a um, one in six UMass Minutemen squad uh, who won week zero late August, uh, but they've lost every game uh, since. Um, Don Brown uh, back in the second stint uh, as the uh, UMass head coach. Uh, now, Penn State, they're four and two against um, his defenses. Um, first time facing him as the UMass head coach. Mark Whipple was the head coach of UMass back in 14, but Don Brown, also in 14, was defense coordinator for Boston College. Penn State beat BC in the Penn State Bowl. Um, so Penn State 4-2 and two against a Brownie coach defense. Wins against um, him when he was at Boston College in 2014, Penn State Bowl. Michigan three times in uh, 2017, 19, and 20. Uh, but then also losses uh, when Penn State went to um, Ann Arbor, who, of course, is a whore. Um, many lines got blown out in uh, 2016 and 18. Uh, however, my dad, James Franklin, Don Brown, they know each other uh, very well because at Maryland in 2009 and 2010, um, Franklin was the offense coordinator. Brown was the defense coordinator. So they've gone at it, you know, more more than um, you think. Um more than the games they've met as opponents, you know, on, on the gridiron. Um, because they, you know, of course, went out it and practice for two consecutive years. But um, Taysom Fawn again, the former Clemson quarterback, uh, will lead the offense. But UMass's defense, uh, they are dead last in the country in points, given up to 39. While Penn State offensively, uh, the New Lions are averaging 40 a game, which is best in the Big Ten. Um, and Penn State's defense is number one in total defense while only allowing nine points per game. So long story short, with all that being said, um, you know, I got more to say. Um, so once more, thanks for tuning in. Game kick off five, 10, 15 minutes or so from now. Um, today's game for UMass could, is, could be as bad as what Bunker Hill was uh, for the colonists. Uh, so we'll see. Only time will tell. Uh, of course, that's why I play a game in Southern Pick Southern Field. So we'll see how much the weather uh, is a uh, factor. Uh, of course, for Penn State, don't look ahead to next week. Um, as you know, the past few weeks, um, even with the bye week, you, you look at it as you know, maybe two, two and a half, three bye weeks before they have to go to Ohio State next week. Um, just with all the schedule uh, shaked out. But just don't look ahead to next week. You know, still one game at a time. Um, and with a win, Penn State would be bowl eligible once more um, with at least six wins uh, at 6-0. and But as the blue and white Penn State and the Lions, of course, as always, put on college football's most historic uniforms. They are heroes. They are winners. They are... Penn State football with the black shoes, basic blues, no names, all game. We're going to go back in time for today's game uh, as it's the sixth ever Generations of Greatness theme for the 103rd homecoming game today uh, as Penn State's 73-24-5 all-time on homecoming weekend. So, of course, for the glory of Old State, we are Penn State, but Generations of Greatness uh, will feature uh, retro Penn State diamond end zones, uh, numbers on the helmets, uh, back to the block uniform numbers with a gray face mask, a white stripe on the sleeve, a blue stripe on the pants, white cleats that were only ever worn once in, in Penn State's um, history up until you know the time they, they started wearing these throwbacks. And then, of course, the Lion Shrine logo on the front of the collar of the jersey. Uh, as Penn State's uh, three and two while uh, wearing these uh, throwbacks. Uh, and Penn State on this very day, it's October the 14th, 2023. Uh, hopefully everybody's enjoying their uh, fall Saturday afternoon, getting ready for Penn State football. Uh, the New Lions are 11 and four all time uh, with the last game um, to be played on this date back in 2006. It was a victory for the victors uh, that day, uh, just as they won again. Um, but uh, Penn State, this is an interesting stat, I thought, uh, before we get into more stats. 
Um, Penn State hasn't won a home game on this date since World War II, which was back in 1944 versus Bucknell 20 to six. Simply because, I mean, it's not like they haven't played on this day, you know, since then. But simply because every game has been on the road. Yes, they've won on this day since, but last home win for Penn State on October the 14th throughout the entire program's history. World War II was going on, 1944. They beat Bucknell 20-6. to So, I, as mentioned, I thought that was a little interesting. Sort of blew my mind. But here's some more Penn State stats for you before we kick off. Uh, Penn State has scored in 32 consecutive quarters, which is the nation's longest streak. The Lions lead the country in time of possession per game as well, uh, with 36 minutes and 7 seconds. Uh, they've won 10 straight games with at least three sacks, which is tied for the nation's longest streak. Penn State's also scored 30-plus points in 12 straight games, which is also the nation's longest streak. And once more, they've also won 10 straight games by at least 14 points or more. With, as mentioned, UMass is 1-6. in six. Their six losses uh, have been by an average of 18 points. So I'll, I'll leave it at that, you know, and we'll see what happens. But um, once again, thanks for tuning in and listening. Um, as they give us a countdown clock now, about 11 and a half minutes away from kickoff. Uh, for the UMass Minutemen and the Penn State Indian Lions. But um, as always, coming at halftime, we'll have first set stats and scores. We'll give a recap and preview. I heard potentially the new kids are on the block will be performing. And then Vince Papali, you know, might have to suit up for UMass, depending on how this first half goes for them. But then later on, once we're finished, as always, as well, we'll recap the game and give more stats and scores. So the difference was, and then um, – We'll see if we're going to be partying like Kennedy tonight with maybe some Sam Adams in hand while salsa dancing uh, before, you know, Penn State goes to the shoe next week to take on the Buckeyes of Ohio State. But it's still one game at a time. So, like I just said a little bit ago, don't look ahead. you got to take care of business first off, and then we'll worry about um, Ohio State in about three and a half hours or so. So... Yeah, been an interesting day uh, in college football. Uh, some blowouts um, at noon, but then a few of the games um, had some comebacks. Um, and some teams held on, some teams didn't. It's the name of the game, though, uh, with the way it goes, is winning. So we'll get more into all that. Um, a little bit later on um, with an update on what the hell's happened officially already now this week seven in college football 2023, which is hard to believe. Penn State coming off of a bye week, hosting UMass here um, in near minutes. Um, so we were watching uh, Michigan State Rutgers. We were watching Indiana, Michigan. We were watching Syracuse, Florida State. And we were watching Arkansas, Alabama. Um, now we're going to be watching, of course, UMass, Penn State, uh, Iowa, Wisconsin, along with Oregon, Washington, and who are, of course, half of the uh, future uh, Big Ten members starting next year as the schedules uh, for 2024 and beyond up until 28 uh, came out during Penn State's bye week. So I guess that'd really be the only, you know, big news uh, for Penn State football um, since last week we uh, spoke um, about the Nittany Lions, which was two weeks ago when they went to Evanston, Illinois, and uh, had a strong second half and um, beat the Purple out of the Northwestern Wildcats. Um, so... Of course, that was then. This is now. Um, odd non-conference game middle of the season, I know. But it's just how the schedule uh, shook out because they started Big Ten play a week earlier than they normally do. Um, but we'll get more into the, that schedule for 
you know, next few years, a little bit later on as well, um, as we're also going to be watching um, BYU and TCU, uh, along with keeping an eye on you know, a few of these other games that are coming up at 3.30 as well with a and and Tennessee and Kansas and Oklahoma State and the Steve Spurrier Bowl. Um, and then we got a strong nightcap tonight uh, as well. Um, but... First things first, UMass, Penn State. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below. Um, and we'll get the show on the road here uh, once they take us to Happy Valley as we're live. Uh, live right here in Happy Valley on YouTube. Uh, getting ready to watch this game. Um, Penn State going to be without uh, J.B. Nelson uh, up front on the offensive line uh, along with Khalil Dinkins uh, at tight end. So uh, we'll see who steps up uh, in their absence. But um, Big Ten Network taking us from the studio to the game. And the following is a presentation of the Big Ten Network and the Big Ten Conference. It is homecoming weekend for Penn State. So, um, yeah, it's, it was nice all fucking week. And then it started raining about 3 o'clock last night. It's been raining steady since. Um, it's going to rain throughout the whole entire game, as mentioned. So, um, got to play through it. You know, it's football weather. But it's homecoming weekend, so um, we are Penn State. Um, shout out to uh, all uh, Penn State uh, alumni, the largest alumni association in the world. Let me know in the comments below where you're listening from. And once more, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below. And there's the uh, drum major going to do the flip. And, of course, as we all know, that is good luck. And he hits the split as well. And they're going to march on down the field. We're about five minutes away from kick. Of course, this happened. Um probably 10, 15 minutes ago, though, um, because they're about to, about to come out as he hits it into the south end zone as well, in front of the student section. You might notice the end zones are different. Yeah, they're going old school retro uh, diamond design uh, for this generation, the greatness game. Uh, on homecoming weekend, so wish they'd bring back the um, Penn State blocked uh, font with the the Chipmunk logo in the in the end zone as well that we haven't seen in almost twenty years. Maybe, maybe next year, the twentieth anniversary since it's been gone. Um, they started the new design in 05. Um, yeah, this is Penn State's first home game in three weeks, but weather hasn't changed. It's still fucking raining on a Saturday. Um, like I said, it was nice all week. I mean, it wasn't, you know, real nice, but it was, you know, still okay to be outside. It's not like it, you know, hit 30 below, but... Meantime, here comes James Franklin and Penn State and the Lions. Oh, oh, we are Penn State. Oh, 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 oh we are Penn State. And regards to the rain, you, you can't tell these fans any different. You know, they're going to show up and uh, they're going to be in uh, full effect uh, cheering on the blue and white. Um, as the S zone will be in Penn State's original colors uh, in pink and black. Um, I know people have been hammering uh, for you know Penn State now that they wear the Generation of the Greatness uniforms to you know potentially add another throwback and you know go to um, the, the pink and black, which you know as the story goes, um, you know just with colors. As we had the same announcers we did two weeks back for the Northwestern game. The slow first half, but then they got things rolling the second half. We'll see what it gives today. Once more, thanks for tuning in. But, um, 
the, the pink and black after weather with you know colors fading they turn to blue and white and I mean God must be a Penn State fan because look at the sky not today of course because it's fucking cloudy and uh, dark and muggy and raining out but um, I think if Penn State can run the football let alone you know stop it they'll be fine you know UMass ain't that great no offense um, I mean you know they're one in six so like enough said uh, they won week zero which was late August haven't won since um, you know their average uh, loss is 18 points so Penn State's winning 10 straight by 14 or more like I'm not saying, you know, how early do the backups get in, but, you know, you catch my drift. Just hopefully nobody gets hurt. Stay healthy. Um, of course, as Corey Geiger wants them to do, throw it deep. Um, we'll see if they do that. Um, but run the football. It starts up front. you got to be able to block the run, let alone quarterback. Of course, Drew Aller's going to have to make some plays. Um, but just keep it simple. Balance, consistency as always. Don't turn the ball over, which they haven't yet. Defense plus 11 in the turnover margin. So if they can capitalize off some turnovers defensively, you know, be even better. Just don't look ahead next week. You know, you got UMass in front of you, not Ohio State. You know, they just beat the piss out of Purdue. But um, there's the, the field being uh, uncovered as they yeah, expected, you know, all the rain and um, you know, ha had it covered as they you know, normally would for the most part regardless of the weather before, before you know, a game you know, then they'll you know, come out and, um, you know, uncover it you know, right around the time you know, the team's gonna arrive you know, the blue buses so uh, everybody should be holding Simba up in the air right now it's homecoming weekend for Penn State, so um, we are, and um, just one thing at a time, you know, just don't do too much, don't give too much away, um, just, just find a way to win. From what I heard, from what I saw... Uh, they might have just said something different, really wasn't listening, but um, he should be good to go. Um, I mean, I thought he's run it better than uh, Singleton to begin with uh, for the most part this season. But, you know, it's a one-two punch. It's the thunder and lightning. It's the Gatorade and the fat man. So we'll see. I mean... If, if uh, you know, he doesn't play, I'm not going to be surprised. You know, then just give him an extra week to get healthy, hold him out, and, you know, keep Ohio State guessing as he, you know, good to go then next week or not. But in the meantime, we're underway. UMass kicks off left to right out of the north end zone. Um, and from the five on the return, Nick Singleton uh, cuts it back to the, about the 29-yard line. So Penn State will have a first and 10 from there, 14.52 to play in this opening quarter. Right to left across your television screen right in I'll dial. So once more, thank you for tuning in and listening. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below. And um, here comes the Penn State offense led by number 15, uh, Drew Aller. Um, we'll see, you know, at running back. Because uh, remember, you have Trey Potts too. Uh, you know, it's not really a one-two punch. It's, you know, they have a trio that, that can, you know, make plays. Um, whether that's running it, whether that's catching it, hell, whether that's even throwing it down too. Um, they got to get these tight ends more involved, though. Uh, Aller under center going to fake the give, and they're going to go deep on the first play. No, he has all fucking day to throw. Uh, and then he chucks it in the ground incomplete, uh, intending for his... Uh, Tight end, it looked like, in 44. Tyler Warren. Uh, Singleton was also in the area. Um, but incomplete, second and 10. But, um, yeah, just audio only uh, today. But thanks for tuning in. 
We should tune back in next week. We'll get back on track with actual video. But uh, second and ten. Couldn't show the game, you know, due to copyright anyway. So uh, live watch long reactions. Second and ten. Aller hands off to Singleton, and he gets nine yards. So they got a third and yard coming up here. Um, just get a first down, move the sticks, keep the drive going. Um, you know, get a, get an early lead if you can, especially with the weather. Um, take your points while you can get them too, because you don't know if you're going to need them later. Uh, that's just, you know, given, you know, uh, for the most part in, in any game. Um, I get, I can understand wanting to go for it every once in a while, but you don't want to, you know, get too far ahead of yourselves and, and then wishing you had it later. Third and a yard, a long one, more like two, and they run a screen to Lambert Smith. Good block uh, by Harrison Walls. Good to see him back. He's been uh, banged up recently. Really hasn't played in about a month. Um, and they're going to go hurry up here with some tempo, first and ten. Uh, trips near side. Uh, ball at the 43-yard line. And out of the gun, they'll run another bubble screen. Lambert Smith near side, and he gets out past midfield. Uh, about a couple yards short, though. Uh, of a uh, first down, so it'll be second and two, uh, about a minute and a half in or so. So, um, you know, they're running to pass for what it's worth uh, to start. But just as long as there's some balance, you know, I, I don't care how you're moving it. Just just don't do anything stupid. Don't turn the ball over. Uh, second and two uh, at 49 in UMass territory for the first time. They're going to go deep. And it's going to be just a little too far for Lambert Smith. Um, incomplete. Corey Geiger would have loved that play. Uh, no matter what, chuck it. Just fucking throw it deep. Somebody's going to be there. You know, Jesus Christ. You know, no wonder he doesn't work for the Altoona Mirror anymore. Uh, third and two. After the incompletion. Get the first down. I think they're going to run the same play they just ran on the bubble screen near side of the far side. Now they'll run a draw up the middle, and Singleton will get it, and they'll move the six once more. So um, They're averaging a, uh, a shitload of first downs um, per game, I might add. So I believe entering the Iowa game, it was like, at least three or four a drive, which is like, you know, 25 to 30 a game. So, you know, no wonder they're controlling the clock because they're moving the football. Uh, first and 10 from the, where are they at, 44-yard line. Handoff Singleton again. They stuff him. He might have got a yard. Uh, so, second down. Let's see a replay here. He's okay. Looked like he might have rolled his ankle. They don't need anybody else getting hurt. <laughs> but uh, second and nine. Aller looking to throw on a slant is caught. Wallace first down, and then he fucking fumbled it. God damn it. UMass has it. I think he might have been down, though. And they are going to say down by contact. Then the ball came out. First down, Penn State. Okay, well, they better get their head straight because one ref saying he was down. The other ref saying he wasn't down. And then they rolled Penn State first down, but now they're saying it's UMass football. So that's close. I mean, it's a catch. I mean, anymore, you know, we don't even know what a catch is, but. Now the rolling on the field is a fumble. Well, you at least got to fucking look at it. You know, can you at least look at it, think about it, and then tell us something good here in a couple minutes? It's a catch, and then hit. the ball is starting to come out right as his knee hit. And then, of course, they have to find an instant of evidence to return it. You know, they're going to take 
TV timeout here, commercial break, 11.30 to play in the quarter. Um, and I believe they're looking at it. So let me know in the comments below if you're also watching, um, if you think that's a catch and a fumble or, you know, catching down by contact before the ball came out. Um, I mean, that that's as close as it's going to get. You know, a little uh, back and forth, though, contradictory uh, statements on, okay, well, yeah. Get your story straight once more. He was down, then the ball came out. First down. No, it's uh, fumbled. Well, they're going to look at it and let us know. So we'll see if it's going to be first and 10 Penn State or uh, first and 10 UMass. And then if it's first and 10 UMass, that's Penn State's uh, first official offensive turnover of the season. Um, they did have a turnover. wasn't on offense, though, Northwestern game. Remember, they fumbled the kickoff return to begin the game. And then they were down in the hole. They trailed for the first time all season in that game, too, a couple times. And they, you know, got back. You know, on their high horse, and um, you know, right off into uh, the sunset with a victory into the bye week. Uh, now here we are, another you know, slow start, if you will. Um, if this turnover is going to hold up and stand and be UMass ball, defense going to have to make a play for him because the offense has had a good drive going. You know, I mean, shit, what a couple first downs already, and then another one, but then. Was it a fumble or not? Well, we'll see when we come back what the call is. But um, I'll leave it at that. There's not much else to be said. But like I said just a second ago, just whatever you do, don't turn the ball over. What do they do? Turn the ball over. So uh, you just can't let, you know, them take advantage of it and capitalize. You know, you don't want to be in a hole and then, you know, have to dig yourself out, which, you know, time and time again, you know, going through the motions, they've had to do just that. Um just you know you'd hope like I said a little bit ago too I know I said a lot already but just get out healthy even though they probably are looking ahead a little bit don't look ahead um, it's just going to depend on how the game you know goes until now until say the second half Catch, fumble, recovered by UMass, so it's first and ten Minutemen. God damn. It is what it is. Play on. Defense needs to make a stop for him. Um, you know, but how early or how late, if, if ever at all, you know, do these backups get in? Um, but first and ten UMass. Pass going to be incomplete on the screen. Incomplete. So, second down. And, yes, uh, UMass's quarterback, number three. I know I'm going to butcher his name. But Tyson Fawnigan, I believe, is the correct pronunciation. Uh, former Clemson and Georgia Tech quarterback. Now uh, back home in the Northeast, where he's from, uh, at UMass. Second and 10 after the incompletion, going deep far side, turn around. Good coverage by Daquan Hardy. Probably could have had a chance to pick it off, but it, it, it sailed. And falls incomplete, so third and 10. Bolt 32 yard line. UMass trying to capitalize after the Penn State turnover. And down he goes on the sack. Denied Dennis Sutton and Deese Isaac. Wrap him up. Fourth and a mile, they'll punt. So defense gets a three and out after the turnover. Now we'll see what the offense can do. Uh, hopefully, once more, don't turn the ball over. By they brought four good coverage and they get to them. Yeah, this defense talk about stout 
Talk about reliable. Penn State looking to block the punt. I almost get him. And then it'll take a roll to about the 33 yard line. So that's where Penn State will begin first and 10 when we come back. 10 and a half to play in the opening quarter, not up at zero. Penn State probably should have some points. I mean, shit, they're right on cusp field goal range and they turn the ball over. Um, but then the defense gets them with the rain out, get the ball back, you know, real quick. And like I said, we'll see what the offense can do. So, um, Oh, first and 10, 33-yard line. Why not take a shot, you know, make Corey Geiger happy? Um, I mean, they did. It was incomplete. But, no, you got to establish your running game. you got to run the damn ball, um, which, you know, they are. Um, just as long as, as mentioned once more, as there's balance, there's consistency, remove the football, not turn it over, we'll be fine. Um they got to get these tight ends more involved, though. They do. Um, and they've, they've started to slowly but surely, but as soon as they go to them, they back off. It's like every other game they're going to the tight ends. It's what it seems like, at least. Um, so, yeah, you have Drew Aller, quarterback. Uh, we'll see if we see Bo Perbilla, uh, the pride of York, as they call him. Um at all in this game today. Um, you know, you, you look at Penn State's on conference games, let alone, for the most part, every game this season, it's gotten to the point sometime in the second half. That's why I've said that now a few times, you know, because when, when is it going to happen? Because you know it will, just a matter of when. You know, knock on wood, I don't want to jinx them, but, you know, that everybody's going to be getting quality reps, you know, in a live, you know, game. I get with, you know, the red shirt role, you can still play up the four games in red shirt, you know. Of course, you don't want to be burning red shirts unless you absolutely have to. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see here what gives. Um, but, you know, from Drew Aller to, yeah, it's really a trio at running back now. And they have more depth even behind them. Um, haven't really seen them, but, you know, it just circles back to recruiting. Even though from recruiting, it's still got to translate onto the field. They still got to execute, you know. Like, they didn't execute on the opening drive there. They fumbled, and then defense gets a three and out and gets the ball back for them. But first and ten here. Theo Johnson in motion. Up to the line, about all day on the play clock. And they'll snap it and run a draw with Singleton for about a yard, maybe two if he's lucky. But, yeah, it's Drew Aller, it's Singleton, it's Allen, it's Potts. Um, at receiver, I mean, I think they're still trying to figure out, you know, who the go-to receivers are, even though Lambert Smith is number one. You know, they're getting Harrison Walls back, yeah. Um, second and eight, out of the gun here. Under 10 to play in the quarter. And they'll run it again up the middle. And to the 40 he goes. Third medium coming up. Um, yeah, run the damn ball, exactly. Um... I mean, third and four, though. I don't know if they're running again. Tight end, though. I'm telling you, down the middle of the fucking field. Got an injured UMass defender. Um, you know, it sucks they don't have Dinkins. Um, as he's out today. But, because he's, he's made some plays for him uh, this season. But, you know, from from Theo Johnson and Tyler Warren... Uh, Rappel, yeah, is from Massachusetts, as Fryermuth was too. You know, I mean, shit, like. From recruiting to, you know, playing, that's That's why I think a few years back it was so fucking frustrating because the talent's there. They just got to put it all together, you know, and they have. Because remember, once again, from, you know, 20 to 21, entering 22, they're 11 and 11 overall. 
and then they won 11 games in last year. And, you know, the 5 0 start this year. But it's always this time of year. It's like, okay, we, we've seen how they played so far, but what's next? Like, are they going to keep it up or are they going to shit the bed? Third and four. Aller looking to throw. And is that caught? They say so. All right. Catch first down. Penn State. Tyler Warren. Guess what? Tight ends. Middle of field. It's there. Guess what they did? Exactly that. And pick up a first down. So, but even with all the playmakers, you know, offense, defense, special teams for that matter, I'd, I'd like some, you know, action in the return game. But it all starts up front. You got to be able to block. You got to be able to protect your quarterback. You got to get, get after the opposing quarterback. They're on a fucking jet sweep near side with Lambert Smith. What is it? Matt Canada calling these plays? Second down. Second and 12 after a loss of two. And he's playing with a club. You don't really see a DB playing with a club. Both 8-1-4 and counting to play in this opening quarter. Penn State, second and 12, down the middle of the field again, incomplete. Third down, late flag comes in. They might get a DPI now on that, which I'll take it. That's an automatic first down. So we'll see what the call is here from the Zebras. First penalty of the game. Pass interference, defense. Be a spot foul, automatic first down. So, um, what it was second and 12. I mean, it's still almost about 15 yard penalty. Um, it's more of a defensive hold than it is a PI, but you know, they still called it, so that's all that matters. Um, and Penn State automatic first down at the 45 yard line. So, yeah, run this damn ball. They're going to throw it. Going deep. Far side, he's got a man just a little too much for Harrison Wallace. Incomplete, second and ten. So they've gone deep now twice. Far side and just a little too much. Incomplete both times. So they are getting that one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. But just as you try to do that and you're running the football, guess what? Middle field is going to be open, and it already is. So... Second and ten here. And Singleton's going to lose a few yards. I mean, maybe Corey Geiger did have some good points. You know, James Franklin took it as vice. You know, and hey, fuck it. We're going to, you know, throw it deep every play. I don't know. I mean, just as long as you give you guys a chance to, you know, come down with it. You should be all right. It's just you don't want to be doing it all the time because the defense knows exactly what you're going to be doing that. And that's why you got to have some balance and consistency. Third and 14, and he's going to get sacked. God damn it. you got to be kidding me. Opening drive, they move the ball. They turn it over. Defense gets a three and out, you know. All right, they start moving the ball again, and now they go backwards, and they're going to have to punt. They couldn't even stay in field goal range, for God's sakes. Son of a bitch. So they'll punt. Riley Thompson booms it away. And it's going to roll out about the 10-yard line. So they do pin him deep. And, you know, maybe they can get off the field again here. Another quick three and out, let alone, you know, back him up, get a safety, block a punt. Just get the ball back and get some good field with it. And then, you know, third drive, third time's a charm, execute off that and, and score some points. I mean, it's not like they're not doing anything. You know, 
you got to give credit to UMass's defense because they're, you know, starting to shut them down a little bit. Um, but Penn State's still able to move the football. You know, it's just it's not as much as I think you'd, you'd like it to be, you know, because they probably should have some points on the board right now, but still nothing. Um, big old goose egg. And that's just not for them. That's for both teams and credit Penn State's defense too. But the good thing about, you know, with the little that's going on is Penn State's controlling the clock. And, you know, they're, they're trying to find a running game. You know, it's there, but it's it's not. It's, I've been saying all season long, it's got to be more consistent because it needs to be more consistent. And they got to get these tight ends involved, and they're trying to. The deep shots have been there. They just haven't been able to execute. They haven't been able to hit them. I mean, that's maybe two walk-in touchdowns if he catches them. You know, they're up two scores. But... Just, just, you know, as we see the Big Ten um, cross-country commercial from Nebraska to Iowa to Minnesota, Wisconsin, Northwestern, Illinois, Purdue and Indiana, Michigan and Michigan State, Ohio State. Of course, we are Penn State Live right here in Happy Valley. Um, to Rutgers and Maryland. Um, we are watching Oregon Washington right now. Huskies just scored on the Ducks. Of course, uh, they are two of the uh, four future members uh, of the Big Ten beginning next year, also with uh, USC and UCLA. Um, but, you know, we'll see here what they do. We'll see. First and 10, UMass from the 10. It's the first shot we've seen of the uh, diamond uh, white PSU football end zone uh, uh, in today's game because neither team's really gotten close. UMass is backed up, but they get five yards up the middle. Uh, second and five with Stitch, 6-2-6 six, six, and counting to play. Um, even with the weather, he's still got to play through it. And the weather really hasn't affected, you know, anything neither team's done yet. So, I mean, the grounds crew does a good job. I mean, the field, like I was saying earlier, covered until the team's got there. I, yeah, I know it's been raining for the past 12 hours. So, um, you know, pretty steadily and it's going to continue on. They get pressure there. So, even with all that, you still got to play through it, you know. Like, you just can't lie down and let them run over you. Third and six. See if defense get off the field here. Get the ball back. Got an empty set. Penn State maybe a DB blitz. And drop. Bubble screen far side. That was a hold, but they finally wrap him up. And he's going to lose the yard anyway. So fourth and long, and they'll punt. So, Penn State, defensively, with the offense, yeah, they may be able to move the ball, but turnover and then a sack on third down, and to punt, defense gets them two quick three and outs. So, should have some good field here. You'd hope the offense can continue to move the football, maybe strike on one of those deep shots. Um, but it starts up front. You still got to be able to block, and you got to run the damn ball. Ooh, they almost blocked that one, too. They're going to get him one of these times, I'm telling you. And on the return is Daquan Hardy from Penn Hills inside the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Penn State. There's the special teams play I've been wanting. They get a fucking return, and he takes it to the house. Touchdown. Thank you. And with 4.17 to play in the opening quarter, Penn State leads 6-0, pending the upcoming extra point. We are down the sideline, too, I might add. Make sure he didn't step out. As they almost blocked it to begin with, Rojas, 13 from Fairfax, Virginia, almost got his hands on it. 
Hardy makes a couple men miss, and then off he goes. Normally, Caden Saunders is back deep. Daquan Hardy today, and he takes the distance about, what, half the field or so, 50 yards, give or take, for make it seven with the extra point up and good. Penn State leads UMass now seven to nothing uh, here, uh, 417 to play in the opening quarter. So uh, defense is going to have to get right back out there. Um, of course, open for another quick three and out. Get the offense ball back. I mean, shit, if they can just return punts all day, that'd be nice uh, for scores, which, you know, that won't happen. But, uh, you know, joking aside, still, still circles back to, you know, being ordered on the football and be more consistent with it and not turn the ball over. And just, I mean, they've had two drives, and they've been, you know, pretty good. They got to get one of those good drives going. You know, you, you look at their scoring drives this year. Um, it's either a couple plays in a you know a minute or two, and they're scoring, or it's a 10, 12, 15 play touchdown drive. Like there's really no in between. Um, just as long you know, at the end of the day, is you know you're scoring points and you're you're winning because that's all anybody ever remembers, whether you won or lost. That's all that matters. So. Uh, I don't care how you get it done, as long as, of course, it's still, you know, in between the lines of, you know, playing the game. You don't want to, you know, Bill Belichick it against UMass today, if you know what I mean. Um, but um, that's the spark, I think, not necessarily they're going to need, but they're going to um, capitalize off of now. You know, they, they have the momentum on their side even though they sort of have from the start. It's just, yeah, credit to UMass's defense. They, you know, got the fumble. They made the stop. But then their offense goes three and out twice because Penn State's defense is stouter. I don't even know if that's a word, but um, you get my gist. You know, they're they're making plays when they need to and um, getting the offensive ball back. And then special teams helps them out too. I mean, I'm going to have to look here. But I believe the last time Penn State returned either a kickoff or a punt for a touchdown was the Rutgers game last season, which that was Singleton going 100 yards to the house as they bring us back um, live to Happy Valley. This would have been yesterday when the sun was out shining, them covering the field. Have we lost audio? Volume go off for whatever reason, or is this just Big Ten Network? Is anybody else having issues, or is it just me? Yeah, they're dead last in defense, and Penn State's only giving up nine points a game. There we go. They're going to say sorry for the technical difficulties, so we play on Penn State on the kickoff. No, I, I was saying. Well, thank you for letting me know about that. Yes, hopefully no technical difficulties on my end with a buffer disconnect. Or reconnect or any other issues today, but no, BTN was having some issues. Um, and a return from about the five yard line, and to the 25 he goes, uh, first and 10, so just as good as a touchback. Um, what was I even saying? Shit. Um, yeah, they covered the field, it rained, we're playing in it. No, yeah, last kickoff punt return, I believe, if I'm not mistaken once more, I'm going to look this up. If anybody wants to look it up for me, let me know in the comments below. Um, last time they had a kickoff or punt return for a touchdown was the Rutgers game last season. Um, punt return, though, for a touchdown specifically, I think you're looking back to probably Michigan State 2020. Um, we'll, we'll see. Um, but yeah, Penn State celebrating the punt return for a touchdown. Um, if uh, you know they can continue to build off this, you know, get more stops. UMass with a second and nine here. It's building blocks. You know, you need a foundation to build a house. It's it's one thing at a time. That pass over the middle caught first down. And Curtis Jacobs on the tackle about the 42-yard line. So, all right. First first down given up, but 
just, you know, continue to make stops. From the 41, officially first and 10. And down he goes. Oh, fumble ball came out uh, as. What the hell just happened? It looked like he got sacked. He shuffled it right last second. All right. And then nowhere to go anyway. They wrap him up. So, second and ten. And they'll run it, and Penn State will stuff them. They'll gain them the play, third and ten coming up. So, just get a stop, get the ball back, and work from there. They're going to bring pressure, and he's going to avoid the sack, roll out, and it's almost picked off. Incomplete. And guess who on the coverage? Daquan Hardy. Yes. Yes. Yes, as Daniel Bryan, Brian Danielson would say. Yes. Fourth down. Normally it's video, today it's audio. Be sure to subscribe, be sure to tune back in. College football, NFL, pro wrestling coverage. UMass punts, line drive, field of the 22, Caden Saunders for a few yards. So first and 10 Penn State. And they'll take a quick timeout and get back to it here. They say 15 seconds, so let's count it down. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. I might, must have been counting too slow because with seven seconds to go, they come back with Penn State up seven, seven nothing on UMass on first and 10. And as I said that, that, another 7, 10 seconds to go on by. So to the snap, 15 seconds later, here we go. First and 10 uh, from the 28. And a handoff to the fat man, Katron Allen. He lowers a shoulder and gets 15 yards. And he's still pushing. Jesus Christ. The fat man bulldozing his way forward for a big Penn State first down. Penn State first and 10 from the 47, another handoff. Fake the give, excuse me, they're gonna run a screen. Lambert Smith, little stiff arm, gets pushed out of bounds, but we are right there by the marker. He's gonna be just short. Second in the yard, yep, trips near side. And they'll run Fat Man. And he gets a first down. So they move the six to Penn State. First down. And three, two, 
one. They will not snap it to end the quarter. That does it for the first quarter. Penn State leads UMass seven to nothing. Of course, they'll switch ends and march their way towards the south end zone now. Looking to add on to their seven point lead because of a uh, punt return for a touchdown. And the last time Penn State if it's even on this list that I found, which it should be. Had a Punt return for a touchdown. As it has a kickoff return for a touchdown with Singleton's 100 yarder at Rutgers last year, yeah, which I do. It does not say for a punt return, which is a surprise. Wait, actually, does it? One second. I'm pretty sure, though, it... It would be the, the Michigan State game in 20. If, if so. At the end of one, Penn State leads UMass seven or nothing. But that's what I was saying earlier. Would like to see more in the uh, special teams return game. And we finally do. Yeah, they're giving us injury updates that we already knew about, so I'll leave it at that. But there we go. Yeah, punt return for a touchdown. It was Jahan Dotson in 2020. 81 yards of the house uh, against Michigan State. That's right. You're welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Begin the second quarter, though. Um, Penn State will run uh, Ketron Allen, the fat man. And he gets, actually, they ran a screen with him. But then he caught it and ran for a couple yards. So, second down here coming up for Penn State to begin the second quarter now. Two plays in, they got a second and two. Aller looking to throw and over the middle, caught first down. That's Harrison Wallace inside the 20, down at the 11. And now they'll have eight shots to punch it in. It's not a first and goal yet, it's a first and 10 at the 11. So they have, you know, to the one to get a first and goal and another four shots to punch it in from there if they can't, which you'd hope to God they can. Don't settle for three, score a touchdown here, go up 14. First and 10, officially from the 12 they mark them down at. Go to the tight end, go to the tight ends. Theo Johnson, Tyler Warren. And they will on a screen in the flat near side. Theo Johnson down to the three. So second in the yard, you got to punch it in. You got to punch this in. Yeah, 
Whatever you do, don't throw a fade. Just run it. And they will with the fat man, and he's going to be a yard short. Be first goal at the one, though. If Aller would have kept it for himself, shit, he would have walked in. Touchdown. But, yeah, they're going to run down their throat now, bringing in some hogs. And they'll run the wing tee. What side they go into? I'm going to say, well, I was going to say near side, but they sneak it up the middle. Now, now it's a touchdown. All right. Drew Aller with a sneak from a yard out. Touchdown, Penn State. And they uh, struck the line and they're rolling up the score here early second quarter. Five state. Five state. Roll lines, roll. We'll hit that line, roll up this score. Fight on to victory evermore. And we'll finish it after the extra point. That should be a penalty. UMass defender was trying to rip him off the pile. You can't do that. I'll reset the play clock. And that was an eight play, 71 yard uh, touchdown drive. What the fuck's with the lay? Oh, don't tell me you're looking at this bullshit. No way. You won't look at other shit, but you'll look at this. Give me a fucking break. He's clearly in the end zone. That is a touchdown. Oh my god. What what can't you see about that? That's a touchdown. Good god. He snuck it. He was never down, and then he reached across the goal line, so to speak, on his back, ball in the air. That's why the defender was trying to, you know, reach for the ball, you know, pull him off the pile, but touchdown stands. So extra point uh, to be tempted here once more. 12.35 to play in the first half. No shit, that's a touchdown. Fucking Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder, and... Everybody else who's blind could have saw that. Extra points up and good. 14-0 Penn State. And they'll fight on state. So, um, you know... Here we are, early second quarter now. Penn State's up two scores. UMass really not doing anything offensively. Because Penn State's defense is getting off the field. You know, three and out, three and out, three and out. I'm not saying this game's, you know, over with, but it's starting to get out of hand. Um, so... I mean, either way, it's 14 nothing. so um, update some stats for you for the first time um, in this ball game. Once more, thanks for tuning in and listening. Tyson Fawn again, 4 7, 15 yards passing. Penn State up 14 0 on UMass, 12 35 to play in this first half. Drew Allers, 9 12, 76 yards passing. Has the rushing touchdown on a sneak. Uh, as the fat man, Catron Allen, 3 carries, 23 yards. Nick Singleton, 6 carries, 18 yards rushing. Good to see Harrison Wallace. Back, he has two catches, 32 yards receiving. Lambert Smith, 420. So, roll it and smoke it. Um, they're getting the tight ends involved for what it's worth. Total two catches, 16 yards. Theo Johnson, Tyler Warren. And then the fat man has a catch eight yards out of the back foot on the screen. Um, 
course, Penn State does have a fumble. First time they've turned the ball over offensively all season. Um, UMass couldn't do anything with it, though, because Penn State's defense got the hell off the field, uh, got the ball back for the offense, who then um, had to punt. And then the next time UMass punted it, Penn State returned it. Uh, Daquan Hardy, um, about 50 yards or so for a touchdown. And then the offense just scored on a sneak, so 14 0. Um, and uh, Falcons extra points uh, have been up and good as well, so 14 0. UMass going to get the ball back here. Yeah, if you win the time of possession battle, if you don't turn the ball over, if, if you're doing everything, you know, right in your eyes, which four FBS programs are independent in 2023? That's today's AFLAC trivia question. Well, UMass is one of them. Notre Dame's another. Um, I'd have to say, well, technically Army as well. Navy's in the American Air Force is out in the Mountain West. I think it's fucking New Mexico, ain't it? Or New Mexico State. Those are your four. First and 10, UMass. Penn State makes stop in the backfield. Safety blitz. And off the edge he comes. And that's the second sack for Penn State today. They've had, what's the stat I said earlier? There it is. They just showed it on the screen. Three plus sacks in 10 straight games. Yeah, it's a tie for the longest streak in the nation. Another flag on the play. And got a personal foul, roughing the pass from Penn State on Deny Dennis Sutton. Yeah, they got to clean up these penalties. That's one thing I think that's been hurting them, you know, all season. It's been penalty, penalty, penalty. Just stupid shit. And that's a fucking flop. Come on. LeBron must be playing fucking quarterback for UMass today. Jesus Christ. Touched him a little bit, but he didn't fucking drill him. 47-yard line after the penalty, first and 10. And Chop Robinson was there, and with the pressure forcing the throw away, it should have been a... Uh, Tackle for loss, whether it was going to be a sack or, you know, right there on the back. Just unblocked, boom, but then he, he held on to it and threw it away. They're working motion, and down he goes again on the sack. Chop Robinson. He wanted him a play or two ago, didn't get him. Now he gets him on that play. So third and a mile. Penn State with three sacks in the first 16 minutes, so give me a hell yeah. That was a hold up front, too, and they still got to him. Third and uh, long from the 40. Play clock winding down. They get it off. They'll run a draw up the middle. Tackle them. Jesus Christ. Be fourth and four. That's another thing. Penn State, when they've been in third and long situations defensively, I mean, shit, 
I don't know how many times it happened against Northwestern a couple weeks ago. They'd give up. Say it was third and 17 as it just was. Like a couple weeks ago, they gave up 18 yards on that. You know, if it was third and 10, they gave up 11. You know, it's like you got to hold them, you know, before they get the first down. Just get the hell off the field. UMass going for it? What zipper? Is that a block? Are they going to, you know, zip but then zip back and show block but not? UMass will punt rather than lining up to go for it at first. And they'll boom it away. And Penn State will let it roll down to the two-yard line. But into the end zone he goes. That's a touchback. So Penn State lucks out there. They'll have the ball first and 10 from the 20 rather than the two-yard line, which, you know, yeah. That was a close call right there. So, well, Halloween's coming up. Maybe Travis Kelsey will go as Taylor Swift. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, all right. Early mid second quarter now. Penn State 14, UMass nothing. I mean, you're looking here, probably another two drives, I think, before halftime. You know, so we'll see how many more points they can add on. Um, you know, take what the defense gives you. Like I said at the start, just get out of this game healthy. Um, no, it's the other team in Pennsylvania. Um, no. It's the black and gold, not the dirty birds. Um, so, yeah, we'll see here how this all shakes out. Surprisingly, Penn State got the ball to begin the game. Normally, they'll def defer and, you know, kick off and then get the ball back to begin the second half. But UMass will get the ball back to begin the second half today. Um, you know, if... If they can just, you know, hold steady, you know, just one thing at a time here, they'll, they'll still be fine. So, there's really much else to be said. I know I've repeated myself on a few things, but, um, you know, this game today is truly, you think about it, really like the last game looking ahead, um, that on paper or the discussion leading into the game if you will you know would be the last like easier easier game you know for for, for Penn State uh, the rest of the way um, because it's only going to get tougher you know just as long as you don't shoot yourselves in the foot you know like they have once again, potential to be very special if they can continue to put it all together and get over that hump, if you will. Allen for five yards, second and five. Penn State from West Virginia, they played Delaware, and then they went to Illinois, hosted Iowa, and just went to Northwestern before a bye week. So, I don't know if you knew that, as they gave us the Aflac trivia question. UConn was the other team. So, I was right on three of the four of them. Allen uh, gets a first down out past the 40, first and 10 Penn State. About nine minutes to play in the half. About 14. And, you know, they've won by as much as they've won by. And, you know, stats don't lie in this category, that category, and all that. But, should be, is, isn't. I mean, however you want to put it. I mean, it really doesn't matter. Then they just slum you one. Like, you could score 60 one week and then half that or even half of that the 
the following week. You know, like, not necessarily inconsistent, but... Allen again, another first down run. They, there's been consistency. I mean, shit, they've scored 30 plus now in uh, 12 straight games. And they're halfway there. I swear to God, I'm fucking bugged. Um, talking about the schedule. And then here we go. Here's the upcoming schedule for them. Like I said, it's not going to get any easier. You know, because first off, Big Ten football, it's not independent football. You know, it's not FCS level football. Um, First and ten, Aller looking to throw, going deep down the middle, flag in the end zone, and ten for Lambert Smith, and be a first and ten here. Yep. So, yeah, he held him the whole fucking way from the line of scrimmage. I'll get back to you on that one. Should should be okay. We'll see here what happens. Though. That's why I was saying a little bit ago. They should have a couple more drives. You know, see how many points they score. But well, yeah, like I said at the start, no shit. They're one and six. But if you still don't execute, you're you know. As the saying goes, playing down to their level. Like, you, you got to play your game, you know? Because that's the thing with us fans. We think we know it all, first off, which we don't, you know, even though we think we do. But when we know they could be playing, you know, better than they are versus, you know, once again, however you want to put it, second in the yard, just get the first down here, get a first and goal. And they will run it. Fat man inside the 10, down the 9, first and goal, Penn State. That still at the end of the day, a win's a win. You take it. But is there a flag on that? No. All right, first and goal here. We'll see what they do. I'll get back to that discussion in a minute. Hold on. And if I forget somebody, please in the comments remind me with anything I've missed so far. First and goal, handoff, Allen, and this was his drive. Fucking no, 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 fat man. Touchdown, Penn State. Six twenty to play in the half. Extra point to come. Um. I mean, it was a handoff to 13, a handoff to 13, and, you know, 8, 10, 12 yards left and right, downfield, touchdown Penn State. Yeah, that's a touchdown. Well, they're called upsets for a reason, you know. Like, you just don't know how the games are going to play out. You know, until they're played. Because regardless of records, and with the weather on top of that, and but, you know, like I said at the start, like stats don't lie. You know, UMass defensively dead last. Penn State, you know, averaging 40 a game, only giving up nine on defense, like, yeah, early second quarter there, starting to get out of hand. Now that's starting to trend in a worse direction for UMass, but an even better direction for Penn State. So we'll see if they come out at halftime. But Penn State, you also don't want to be like Colorado last night. You know, like, I don't know if anybody else stay up and watch that game like I did, but... Um, you can't miss that, you know... After dark college football, which the Big Ten is going to be in here before too long with uh, a couple of former Pac-12 teams starting next year joining the conference. But um, yeah, just it's still 
the one and oh motto. It's one thing at a time, you know, one play, one drive, one game. Just find a way to win, you know. But they're uh, they're in a good spot, you know. I don't know if they'll you know, today score their most points they've scored all season or not. We'll we'll see about that later on. Um but when you're steadily, consistently averaging 40 a game and you've scored 30 plus in 12 straight games and you're, you know, more than halfway there now. And we still got a lot of football to play. That's the other thing, too. Like, game ain't over until it's over, until those triple zeros on the clock. Um, I mean, you'll know when it's officially over, though. At least have the feeling. But, um,. Yeah, just, you don't want to get too full yourself, you know, be doing shit you're not supposed to be doing. As I said, just get out healthy. Especially with the rain, you don't want to be rolling ankles, you know, twisting your knee up. You know, it's going to cost you. But circling back to what I was saying earlier, just don't look ahead to next week when probably tell, like I said, they probably already have let alone I mean, you probably start, could you know, looking ahead next week but you know, they're not going to admit that until after the fact, because here we go Pence it kicks off, but like I said, it's not going to get easier, it's not especially, and I think this oh, boom, big hit Tony Rojas be first and ten UMass. But um I think what's just in the back of my mind is you know, this time of year, the past few seasons for Penn State. And I'll leave it at this and that once I'm done and we'll move on. Is you know, mid October is when the season either went down the drain or it stayed steady, you know, and then they, you know, finished how they finished last year versus the year before and the year before that. You know. Yeah. Rain, sleet, snow, wind. Doesn't matter. It's a hold. They wrap them up. No game in the play anyway. Yeah, Nittany Nation going to show out. Late flag comes in. Maybe it's for the hold. I don't know. So. Let's see what the call is. But. Yep, it'll be a hold on UMass, 10 yards, make them replay it down or decline it second and 10 or first and 20. What do we got? Holding. 10 yards, they'll replay it down and be um, first and 20. There they are taking the tarp off, yep. Yeah. Yet it's still raining in the meantime. Time lapse. And there it is now live with fans. Students are obviously there, but not in full effect. Right downtown or in their dorm room. Down he goes again on the sack. A D size, look at the three yard line. So, second and. Uh, even longer than it just was at first and 20. It'd be like second and 28 probably, second and 30 coming up. What do we got? Second and 25, they say, at the three-yard line for UMass. And out of the pistol, they'll run it. And no gain on the play. So third and long. Penn State's defense making some more stops here. There's James Franklin along with Mike Yersich and Manny Diaz. Don't give up 27 yards on this. 
I swear to fucking God, do not give up first down. Corner blitz. And they'll hand off for three yards, so fourth down, they'll punt. Penn State getting the ball back here. Four and change and three timeouts. They'll get the ball back here with probably 340 or so to go with those three timeouts before halftime after this punt. Yeah, that's just how good they are, though. So fourth and 22, UMass on to punt. And from the 40 on the return, Daquan Hardy gets five. They're going to push the pile. When do you ever see a pile getting pushed on a punt return? The flag on the play. See what that dirty laundry is. So the Zebras calling anything and everything now after letting them play early on, but... No foul on the play, they pick it up. I don't know what it was for, but... Be first and 10, Penn State. Got a TV timeout, 3.38 to play in the half. Penn State's got three timeouts and a short field. And they're up 21-0. So, yeah, they they should be able to help you out there uh, with a, a minus um, for the, the first half spread um, for what you got it at. But... Um, just... Overall, once again, this game, get out healthy. You know, I don't I don't care this rate. Who's playing, who's making plays, just don't blow the lead. Which I don't think they will. Because they shouldn't, for one, but I don't, I don't think they will. Because, I mean, what's UMass done? Because that's just how good this Penn State defense is. You know? I think they've punted every fucking time they've had the ball, haven't they? You know, Penn State probably should have some more points on the board than they do, though. You know, I mean, the fumble, the punt, you know, those drives were looking at least like field goals, if not if not touchdown drives. Um, and then they got rolling with, with the punt return for a touchdown, and they scored twice since. So, um Attack on the lead. And we'll go from there. So, I'll leave it at that. Um, I'll shut the hell up for the first time this first half. And we'll see what they do here before halftime. So, thanks once more for tuning in and listening. Like, follow, subscribe on social media. Links in the description below. Thumbs up button, share, chat questions and comments, super chat, super stickers, super likes, super thanks. Always greatly appreciated. Be sure to check out Rogue Energy. Luke123 for 10% off. Hope K Thrifts, secondhand resale shop focused on staying in the environment in a cheap and fashionable way. As most items are $20 or less, include brands like American Eagle Converse, Free People, and Shine, among others. Hope K Thrifts links. In the description below for Depop, Instagram, McCarty, and Poshmark, and cheap thrifts for 10% off. Cheap thrifts, C-H-E-A-P, T-H-R-I-F-T-S. And then Dead and Hungry, uh, fresh, hot off the press novel, read by Nathan D. Mitchell, uh, link for Amazon, um, also in the description below. So first and 10, uh, Penn State after another UMass punt. They're going to start shot from the 35-yard line in UMass territory. So don't tell me you can't score a fucking touchdown. First and 10, 338 to play in the half with three timeouts. We're starting the drive at the 35-yard line. 
You should at least be able to get a field goal right off the bat, for God's sakes. Don't take any sacks. Don't lose any yards. Singleton on a run, far side. Oh, good block by Tyler Warren, and then shoves the guy into the bench, too. Um, he gets, what, eight yards, give or take, second and short coming up? I mean, if you'd want to work some clock here, too, I mean, why the hell not? Um, yeah, I mean, it started with the punt return. And even though they had momentum, that was the spark that uh, set them off. And boom goes dynamite, as I was asking earlier. That was the big question. And, you know, 21 nothing lead here. They'll run it again. Singleton up the middle, first down to the 21. So they're right on the cusp of the Del Grosso red zone. Keep running it. They can't fucking stop you. But if you want to throw, I'm telling you, down the middle of the field, the tight ends. A play action right now wouldn't be a bad idea. First and 10 from the 21. They'll run Singleton again far side. And these backs, and shit, we haven't even seen Trey Potts yet. Singleton to the fat man. I mean, they're averaging a good six, seven, eight yards a tote. Um, so keep pushing them back. Keep making them break. And there's just as much as you run it, they're going to be wanting to stop the run then. That's when you beat them with the play action. Penn State's held. I might add defensively UMass to negative three yards rushing so far today. Whereas Penn State entering today might add another stat for you. Um, four consecutive games they've held their opponents under 100 yards rushing. Um, minute and a half and counting to go. They've got a first and goal now. Just keep running it. I mean, this is just old school smash mouth football. They're punching them in the face and they're not getting up. So guess what? They're going to continue to punch them in the face until they're knocked out dead and cold. They run a screen far side. Lambert Smith, he gets three yards. All right. You're probably, you know, want, going to want to run something near side, though, because far side working on that hash, um, you're, you're running out of, you know, some real estate, if you will. Let alone, you know, you're getting closer to the end zone. You don't have as much depth going deep to work with either other than the back of the end zone. So from the uh, seven second and goal, they'll fake it. Oh, my God. Incomplete in the flat to Theo Johnson. Hit him in the hands, dropped it. Defender is right there. Probably should have picked it off, but falls incomplete. Do it all over again here. Third and goal from the seven. Looking to throw again. And over the middle, caught, touchdown, Penn State. Tyler Warren down the middle of the field. What have I told you? Tight ends down the middle of the field. And boom, shakalaka, touchdown, Nittany Lions. Minute one to play in the half, up 27-0 on UMass. This crowd ain't going to go anywhere either. I mean, some might fall out at halftime later in the end of the third quarter, but they'll be there as they are all morning, all day, all night long on a Penn State football Saturday. But I was just about as ready to say, too, like, don't convert. Like, you get away from the run, and then you got to settle for three because you want to fucking throw it and run these trick plays, you know? So they keep fucking running it. Not necessarily trick plays, but, like, just... They can't stop the run. Like, keep fucking running it, you know? So... Aller with a rushing touchdown now, along with a passing touchdown. 
Um, Fat Man has the other, and then Daquan Hardy on a punt return for a score is your 28 points. Um, as we near halftime here coming up on 5 o'clock Eastern. So thanks once again for tuning in and uh, listening. Um, at halftime, we'll have first assassin scores. Uh, we'll see what the hell else is going on in college football if we get around to it. Um, but, yeah, just at this rate, once more, get out of this game healthy. You know, you're probably this rate going to start to look ahead to to next week. I mean, you're up 28 nothing. But look, look at last night, Colorado up 29 nothing at half. And they lose at home in double overtime to a one-win Stanford team, just like UMass is, in double overtime, 46-43. to 43. I'm not saying history is going to repeat itself, because sure as hell hope it won't, but not in that regard. Um, but, you know, really they just need one big play to get them going, just like Penn State had, a, you know, a sport. But the thing is, this Penn State defense is like locked down. Like they're gonna, they're gonna stop you, and they do again right there. So, no gain on the play. Actually, a loss of two. They say a second down. Penn State with a timeout. They're gonna try to get the ball back again before halftime and score once more. So, maybe Neil Brown's who's a UMass alum, current West Virginia head coach who accused Penn State of running up the score. Maybe they, you know, are, you know, getting to that point. I'll say that. Um, but just as long as Penn State doesn't lose on a Hail Mary, I mean, yeah, that's that. No, I'd like, you know, of course, this game to finish up. Penn State wins, whether it's a shutout or not. Which, that would be the stat to look at then, if so. When was the last time Penn State had back-to-back -back home shutouts? Because they're coming off the Iowa whiteout game to shut out the Hawkeyes, and now they're shutting out UMass. You know, we'll see what holds up in the second half. But, um, you know, just as any team you beat, you want them to continue to win – you know, after you beat them, because then it's going to make you look even better. You know, like, is Phil Brooks at Penn State, or uh, this a commercial? Um, is he is he leaving one company to go to another and getting into other business ventures? I don't know. All joking aside, no, you want, and West Virginia's helped him out. Delaware's helped him out. Yeah, Illinois and... Um, Northwestern, not that great. Um, I was up at Wisconsin right now. Truly, you'd have to think the winner of this game with the way the Big Ten West is, you know, is probably going to go to Indy, you know, early December. Um, as that's a low scoring defensive showdown, we got a shootout in the Pacific Northwest and in, in the Pac 12 with, you know, a few teams that are joining the Big Ten uh, soon. Um, as Washington extends their lead over Oregon. Um, and then, you know, we're keeping tabs on other games as well. So Penn State, as UMass, will have a fourth and nine. JVP forever. Um, Penn State calls another timeout. They're going to get the ball back here with some time. Potentially do something uh, once more again before halftime. Already up 28 to nothing. At least get a field goal if you can. Maybe, hell, shit, return another punt for a touchdown. Um, you know, but if you can score a touchdown offensively, you know, in, you know, a split second, by all means, go ahead. You know, I'm not stopping you. I don't think anybody will. Other than, you know, UMass going to try to. Yeah, Penn State going to get the ball back about 46 seconds right now. So we'll say 35, 36 with no timeouts, though. So we'll see about the field position. We'll, we'll see, you know, 
how the first play goes with no timeouts. Of course, sideline's going to be your friend in the situation. Tell out of bounds, clock stops. Maybe they block a punt. Ooh. And it'll be downed at the 50. UMass will down it. So first and 10, Penn State at midfield. No foul for running or roughing the punter. So Penn State, yeah. First and 10 now, 37 seconds from midfield. Yeah, they tipped it. They almost blocked it. So it was deflected and short punt. And then, you know, they downed it even though there's a Penn State defender nearby and like, get the hell away from the ball. But can they drive and score here? Can they get some more points before halftime? Now the refs are huddling up again. What do we got now? Are you kidding me? That's another fucking turnover. They said Penn State touched it on the return, and then UMass recovered it. I think he downed it before he... Oh, it did touch him. Yeah. And it was good for Daquan Hart. That's why he was near the ball to recover it. All right, I'll live with that one. So now it's UMass ball first and 10 at midfield. So keep him out of the end zone. Keep him off the scoreboard before halftime. Yeah, you got to stay the hell away from the ball. Oh, well. Son of a bitch. Come on, defense. And they sack him. And the thing is, Penn State can't stop the clock. And UMass, even with three timeouts, I don't think they're in any hurry. And we'll hit halftime here at 28 nothing. Penn State on top of UMass. When Penn State, once again, potentially leaving points off the board. Run one more play. It's caught, but then dropped incomplete. All right, clock stops with three seconds. So third and long coming up. Yeah, you got a Hail Mary incoming. Hook and ladder. And let's see if they can get to him and sack him once more. They'll run a draw because Penn State was bringing everything except the kitchen sink on that. And now we at halftime at 28 nothing. so. UMass will get the ball back to begin the second half. Um, so it's going to be a little while until Penn State offensively, you know, has it once more. You know, they're hoping to get the ball back there, 37 seconds. But, you know, the, the turnover once more on the, on the return. Potential points left off the board there. Potential points left off the board on the opening drive because of the turnover as well. You know, if they can clean that up, clean the penalties up. Uh, there's always something, even with a big lead, to be disappointed about. James Franklin interview. Let's see what he's got to say. Secured the ball. Stayed on schedule. Yeah, they did take some shots, remember, early. Didn't execute, though. Yeah, Penn State's defense is holding. Yep. I mean, shit, we've seen how many sacks and tackles for loss already in this first half. And Penn State, 30 straight in 12 straight games, are up 28 nothing at halftime. So, unless they, you know completely shit the bed and whether UMass does anything or not you know they, they should should extend that is yeah the thing is as mentioned um, they're, 
they've left points off the board. And that's frustrating. It is. Um, I'll live with the, the punt there that the ball hit the uh, returner and then UMass recovered it rather than downing it because it's a live ball then. Um, even though, you know, okay, you were going to have first and 10 at midfield, 37 seconds, potentially, you know, score some more points once more before halftime. You know, so three to seven, tacked on to what they have, let alone another three to seven times two. Um, for the two opening drives with they were able to get in UMass territory. Um, you had a fumble and you had a punt. And then they couldn't even kick a field goal. So you're you're looking at another max of 21 points. Um, which, you know, then they're, they're blowing their ass out, which they sort of already are. It's just worse than it is. Um, but you're looking at it close to a 50 burger, um, and covering the spread in the first half, which they did for, for, for that to begin with, which, you know, I could care less if they cover the spread or they don't, or if the over under hits, just as long as you win at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Um, and a game like this, you know, get out healthy once more. You know, and move on to next week. Um, which you still don't want to look ahead to next week just yet, but I'm I'm sure they're already thinking about it a little bit. Yeah, no doubt about it. Just because um, with how big of a game it is uh, for both teams, but especially them, because uh, they haven't won in Columbus since 2011. They haven't beaten Ohio State home or away since 2016. They've come close a handful of times, but no cigar. Um, so if, if they can continue to run the football, which they've been able to do extremely well today, Penn State with officially 20 carries for 103 yards rushing as a team in this first half. Um, and two rushing touchdowns. And a passing touchdown and a punt return for a touchdown as well. Um, but circle back. Yeah, they've left points off the board. You're looking at a 49 nothing halftime if they've been able to execute, if they've been able to keep it going, if they've been able to, you know, not turn the ball over. You know, nothing stupid. Exactly. Yeah, play smarter. Um, and that, that adds in with the turnovers and penalties as well. Um, which, once again, entering today, offensively, didn't turn the ball over. Well, they turned the ball over. So that doesn't stand up anymore. And then they've had two turnovers on special teams in back to back games now. You know, yeah, it's play, it's play smarter overall. It, it, don't shoot yourselves in the foot. Um, defense is making plays, though. You know, I'll put this defense up against um, any other defense, let alone any offense in the fucking country. And, you know, they're, they're going to, you know, 95% of the time get them out of the jam and get the offensive ball back, you know, and, you know, if the offense can do something, okay. If they can't, well, then you're stuck. But that's what a running game and a good defense, quarterback's best friend. And they have the running game and they have the defense. And Drew Aller ain't looking half bad either at quarterback. So, um, with that being said, it's 28 nothing at halftime. There's still a lot to work on, though. There is. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, the, the two turnovers – Officially, um, let me look at the penalties here. Yeah, 
if it loads as they show us some uh, highlights of other games ongoing as it's of course a um, typical college football Saturday but odd for sure yes as mentioned at the start Penn State having a uh, you know mid-season non-conference game the way they have here Surprisingly, they only have one penalty for 15 yards, which that, that can't be right. That can't be right. They have more than one penalty. I know that much. UMass has a few as well. Three for 34. Penn State one of 15. But it's just overall today, I mean, with the rain, I get, you know, the elements situation. You still play through it. And even with that, that's really, it's really not affecting the game. You know, you're not seeing anybody slipping and sliding around, you know. Yeah, you just got to play smarter, you know. Play their heart, play their head. Um, yeah, it's not, it's just nothing stupid. Don't be turning the ball over. Because, yeah, it's 28 nothing when it really probably should be anywhere from that till 49 to nothing. You know, you could say 37 to nothing, you know, with three field goal drives. The two to begin the game, then one, you know, before halftime, but, or a combination of both, you know, anywhere in between. So, I mean, they have the points to have. It's not like they're necessarily needing you know, all this to to win because what's UMass done? Not a damn thing. Um, they, once again, I believe, punted every single drive, if I'm not mistaken, other than to end the half there. And they ran a drop in the middle because if he would have threw, it would have been sacked on a Hail Mary because Penn State was burning the house. Um... So, Penn State's in a good spot. Um, Penn State um, up 28 nothing at halftime on the UMass Minutemen. This is a non-conference Big Ten independent game. Uh, second ever meeting between the two. Um, and UMass will begin the second half with the football as they kicked off to begin the game. Um, Penn State, they scored in the first quarter, right? Yep. And then scored... Everything else in the second quarter. So now they've technically scored in 34 consecutive quarters, which tacks on to their nation's longest streak. Time of possession. They should be leading that category, if I'm not mistaken. And they are by five minutes, 1727 to 1233. They're two points shy of, you know, 30 a game for the 13th straight game. And right now, the, the score would hold, let alone anything else happens. Yeah, it looks like it'd be 10 straight games of at least, make it 11 straight games, then at least 14 points uh, or more in the win. Um, the, the defense is playing excellent. Um, officially... Six sacks and ten tackles for loss in the first half. Adise Isaac has 
Two and a half sacks. Chop Robinson has two sacks. Cam Miller has a sack. And Denai Dennis Sutton has a half a sack. Whereas Adisa Isaac has three and a half tackles for loss. Chop Robinson has two tackles for loss, which, you know, those equal out with the sacks then as well. Um, plus one. Curtis Jacobs has a tackle for loss. Cam Miller has the sack tackle for loss. Abdul Carter, first time I've said his name all day, uh, has a tackle for loss. Devon Ellis, Keziah Izzard, and Denied Nutt Sutton half a tackle for loss. Um, Falcons, of course, good on his four extra points. Penn State's only punted once. It's a second drive. It took a sack. Had to punt. Whereas the opening drive, there, there was a fumble. Um, you know, those are points uh, left off the board drives, in my opinion, as they were, you know, moving the ball there right in the cost of field goal range. And then, you know, shit hit the fan. And then right before halftime, another, you know, drive they could have got more points uh, on. Um, UMass punted, hit a Penn State defender uh, on the return, and rather than downing it, it was technically a fumble, and they recovered, but they didn't do anything before halftime. So it's 28 to nothing at halftime. Penn State leads UMass. Um, Tyson Fawn again, 6 of 11, 25 yards passing. Karon Lynch Adams has six carries, 17 yards rushing. Greg DeRosers Jr., three carries, 16 yards rushing. Of course, Fawn again has been sacked six times for a negative 32 yards. Uh, Johnson has a catch for 16 yards. Campanotti has a catch for 10 yards. Their defense is playing all right. You got to give them credit. They are. Um, but yeah, UMass, they have punted on. Every single drive except for the end of the half, and one of those was returned for a touchdown. Penn State up 7 nothing, and then they scored 21 unanswered from there. Um, so Penn State, Drew Aller, 13-17, a buck seven at halftime with a touchdown. Uh, that touchdown to Tyler Warren on a slant over the middle into the end zone, 4-7. Uh, um Allen was wondering if he was going to be good to go earlier. Well, he's playing excellent, as both him and Nick Singleton are. Penn State's been running the ball, um, very efficient. Fat man averaging eight yards a carry to Singleton's four. So eight carries, 67 yards, and a touchdown for 13. And then uh, 10 carries and 43 yards rushing for 10. Um you know, you keep running it, eventually you're going to break one. They haven't done that just yet, but um, I think potentially here sometime in the second half, they, they might um, be off the races. Um, let alone beat them deep with some play action. Because, remember, they, they went deep for Corey Geiger there a couple of times in the first half. They just couldn't execute. Um, Maybe they, you know, overthrew him. Maybe they wanted him to fall incomplete. And they tell him, hey, like, you do this all the time, and it doesn't fucking work, dude. Like, keep writing your articles. But, no, um, joking aside, yeah. Keep running, it's going to open up more opportunities to do whatever the fuck you want. Um, that's what starts up front. You've got to be able to block to run, protect the quarterback. Of course, you got to get after the opposing quarterback as well, which they have. But it's, it's balance, it's consistency, it's momentum, it's rhythm. Um, it's, you know, first down, first down, first down. You don't want to be going backwards like they are. You want to move forward. You want to score points. You don't want to, you know, be getting shut out. Um, 
So, and once more, this is really like their last tune-up game, if you want to call it that. Um, but typical Penn State at times, not today, but at times in games like this. That's probably why I was saying everything I said in the first half as well, just in the back of my head once more that, you know, okay, slow start. It's going to take them a little while to get going, and then once they get going, they'll be fine. But seemingly from the get-go, they they came to play. They, as they should, you know, I mean, this is what they're getting, you know, with NIL now paid to do. Um, let alone just, just, just making plays, you know, for – it's not the name on the back, it's the name on the front. Um, it, and it's generations of greatness this homecoming weekend. So it, it's, you're, you're paying homage to those of, you know, come before you. Um, but the first two drives, I mean, once again, those should have been scoring drives. Whether field goals, touchdowns, they should have points. And then it took the punt return for a touchdown, which... So I had to look that up, you know, when was the last time that happened? And it's been a few years, and I, I was right with what I had said. Um, but, you know, would like to see the return game, you know, finally finally show the hell up. And as the big dog joins us, how you doing, buddy? Hmm? Love you. Hmm? What's up? Hmm? Um... Yeah, the return game finally showed up, and they finally, I mean, it wasn't even good field position. It was to the house touchdown. Like, I was just hoping, because really, up until this point, I haven't seen anything in the return game. Until now, with the touchdown, at least get, you know, like, 25-yard return or so. You know, just get some good field position. You know, you got to have some momentum. you got to be able to capitalize them. Another thing, too, about being able to capitalize, they haven't forced any turnovers. Um, they're still plus 11 in turnover margin, but UMass has done a good, good job holding on to football. Uh, so give them credit there, too. But um, Add on to these stats. Harrison Wallace, good to see him back once more. First time he's played in about a month. Um, he has three catches, 44 yards. Uh, Lambert Smith, 5 of 23. Uh, Theo Johnson has two catches, 18 yards. Tyler Warren has two catches, 14 yards, and the touchdown uh, from Drew Aller. Aller, of course, has the quarterback sneak for a touchdown as well. Allen, um, the touchdown he scored, that was his drive. I mean, it was left and right, the whole way downfield, just able to run the football uh, real efficient and effectively. Um, and then there's the, the punt return for a touchdown, of course, too. Um, so as the teams come out for the uh, second half, they show off some first half stats. Yeah, um, it's it's all Penn State. It is all Penn State, and you know, with this lead once more, and the weather and looking ahead as I've said a few times now let's get out healthy and you know move on to next week when the time's right here About another hour and a half or so probably but who's getting quality reps this second half who, who you know as backups or, you know, starters, if you will, but then the main starters go out and then you just keep, you know, milking the clock and climbing up the ladder. And who's going to get to play the second half? Who's going to be making plays? UMass signals fair catch. So, first and ten, minute men from the 25 to begin this second half. Yeah. 
He said all that going into halftime. What have I been saying? All fucking game. It's a last test. You know, until it, it gets, you know, tougher. They get into the thick of it for the rest of the season. You know. So don't shoot yourselves in the foot and stay healthy. I can't I can't state that enough. Yeah, I know it might sound like I'm beating a dead horse, you know, in that category, but it, it's true. UMass going deep. Incomplete, almost picked off. And uh, Daquan Hardy's been having a day. Um, Partner turn for a touchdown, some lockdown coverage. And starts up front, yeah. They've got to him six times on sacks. There's been 10 tackles for loss. So, incomplete, second and 10. Uh, as we begin this uh, second half, but screen near side incomplete. He caught it and was running with it before he had it. It falls incomplete. Third and ten. And UMass they have not yet converted on third down, where they have two first downs, but not on third down. They haven't converted. They're 0 of seven on third down, whereas Penn State's four or five. So it's, it's execution. It's, you know, it's got to be able to do something, you know, like show some signs of life. Third and 10 from the 25 to begin the second half of this morning. Penn State up on UMass, 28 to nothing. Three, two, one. That's delay a game. That is delay a game. They let it slide. They still sack them anyway. And UMass will punt once more, and Penn State is getting the ball back. 20 seconds into this um, second half. I mean, three plays in 20 seconds and a three and out, that might be a record. So we are Penn State. And Penn State here uh, on the return. Should have some good field, I think. Just nothing stupid. Ooh, they almost blocked the punt again. Fair catch signal for at midfield. So right back where they started from right before halftime, but didn't even get the drive because of the turnover. So, yeah. First and 10 from the 50, run the ball, work some clock, you have a lead, you know, get out healthy, but I mean, maybe, maybe they make a splash play here too. Yep. And hopefully you'll tune in live right here on YouTube for those live watch along reactions. But we still got to have a football be played from now until then. So, Aller looking to throw, and it'll be caught. Lambert Smith, and then he dropped it. All right, that was a little weird. Looked like he pulled up after he caught it and was holding his hamstring. But I say hopefully he's okay. But he's okay. He just flat out dropped it. I don't see where he dropped it at though. Clifford, the little red dog in motion. Aller on a slant near side. They'll come back to um, Lambert Smith. He makes the catch for six yards. It'll be third down and four. Make it third and three. Third and three officially, excuse me. They'll run it on third and three, and they'll stuff them. No gain on the play. And Penn State's going to have to punt to begin the second half. Huh. 
And are they going to line up to go for it? They'll probably just try to draw them off sides and then take a delay game and punt. Get all day on the play clock, and they'll motion out empty set. Fourth and two. What do they do here? They'll snap it. They're going to go for it on fourth and two. Aller going to tuck it and run. Quarterback draw, and he gets a first down. What a play call. So get back to the run game. What screen game involved, too? Why not? You know? I mean, you only have one catch for eight yards to a running back today. So first and ten after the fourth down conversion. And UMass jumps off sides, free play. They'll run it for five yards up the middle. So, I mean, you, you take the penalty because you get the extra down. Rather than second and five, you still have um, first and five with them jumping off sides unless they say false start. But they're going to say offside. So, yeah, take it. Take the five yards on the penalty rather than the, the run you just had. Get the first and five rather than the second and five. Offside on UMass. Five yards, replay first down, be first and ten. Or first and five, excuse me. From the 30, first and five. Aller looking to throw down the middle of the field. Caught Theo Johnson wide open. Touchdown, Penn State. And guess what? Tight ends down the middle of the field. It's there. It's been there. They go back to it, and it works. Touchdown. 34 nothing. They've now scored 30-plus points in 13 consecutive games, which that streak extends. 11-29 to play in the third quarter, and... They're clicking on all cylinders now. You know, there's been a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I mean, hell, even the return game on special teams. There you go. Extra point, up and good. 35-0 Penn State. This is like, you know, as a student section, that's completely fucking left. A hob. Season ticket holders are still in attendance, so um, this is like a fucking D1, you know, college football team, pro team for that matter, taking on a team that seemingly has never played football before. Um, even though UMass, you know, they've, they've made some stops. Uh, they made Penn State make a decision on fourth down on that drive, and they went for it, and they executed, and then they scored on a couple plays later. Um, like, Penn State games at this point, if some stuff doesn't go their way, you know, or even if it does, and then the other team is making plays, other than this game and another game, all the other games have been a hell of a lot closer than the score, you know, shows. Until Penn State then, you know, pulls away. Um, so. Yeah, we're at the point now, like I said at the start. Come second half, as it's been seemingly every game. Who's coming into play? for whoever because they're going to rest the rest of the game and sit, you know, and get ready for next week. Because next week's game, I'm not really going to talk about it right now. I'm going to talk about it later. To this point, going to be the biggest game, as every game is on this season. On the schedule. 
the, the overall biggest game, you know, that they flat out go out, have to go out and win, you know, because then if not, it's back to, all right, well, they can't get over the hump. They can't beat this team. They can't beat that team, you know, blah, 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 blah. So, like, you shut everybody up if you take care of business. And I'll leave it at that for what it's worth for, for the time being. But 35 nothing. Um, Drew Aller now another passing touchdown. Both passing touchdowns at the tight end. So they're finally hearing us on getting the ball to the tight ends out the middle of the field and, you know, you know, scoring because it works. Um, Aller 15 to 20, a buck 44 and two touchdowns. Um, Warren. Two for 14 in the score, and Theo Johnson now 3 of 48. And the touchdown. Bump, bump, bump. Good times never seem so good. Eat shit, eat shit, eat shit. Um, but 35 nothing. 11 29 to play in the third. Penn State on the kickoff. Another fair catch on the kick. So a touchback, technically be a first and 10 U match from the 25. So yeah, like I said, they're, they're clicking on all cylinders. I mean, they're able to run the football. Um, yeah, they've turned it over, but you know, they're able to throw the football too. Um, you know, it, the stat book might not look like a lot, but at least they're balanced, you know? Like, it could be whatever number you want to put to it, as long as there's balance, you know? Like, I, as long as you're moving the ball and scoring, like, I don't care what what the stats are going to show, even though they don't lie. As long as you're not doing anything stupid, you know? You're not shooting yourselves in the foot, no penalties, no turnovers. Yeah, there's been a few, but... Um, They're able to run the ball. They're able to throw the ball. Defense is playing excellent. And then, you know, special teams is really, really stepped up today. I mean, it's not every day, let alone a handful of times throughout the whole entire season, for that matter, let alone every couple of years do you get a kickoff or a punt return for a touchdown. You know, and that's why you take your points while you can get them. I mean, they've left some points off the board, yes. UMass third and long here. But a play like that, and they give them a fucking first down and run on third and 11. Jesus Christ. Um, you know, those points off of the, the partner turn for a touchdown or the points off of this or that. Like, overall... The end of the game might be the difference in why you either you won or lost. And he's getting his ass chewed out, and rightfully so. I mean, third and eleven, they give him a fucking draw up the middle for fifteen yards in first down. That's becoming a trend now. They finally wrap him up. He bounced a couple tackles. Um. Still no gain on the play, though, as he was going to the sideline. You know, enough of this east-west bullshit. Go north-south. But second and ten, but yeah. They're they're good defensively. It's just those third and longs, and they give up a big first down. And it's like, in the you know, momentum goes away. Under ten to play now in the first... Five, make it five and a half, six minutes in this third quarter. Second and ten. Flag on the play, though. Disconcerting signals on Penn State. All right, so that's like a delay a game. All right. Uh, they just making up shit on the fly for Penn State's penalties today. Because that, and what was the other thing they called a penalty on her? Or reviewed something that they shouldn't have reviewed. Right? Yeah. Like, what the fuck? 
And then, you know, you wonder why, you know, Penn State fans, myself included at times, you know, act like, you know, not necessarily out to get them, but it's just plain and simple. You either like Penn State or you don't. There's no in between. But all of the nation, of course, we are Penn State. We love the Nittany Lions. Third and two. Pathetic. The Vaughn Ellies wraps him up. Body slams him on the bear tackle. Fourth and long. UMass to punt. Are they going to line up to go for it? It's not really that long. It's maybe fourth and six. But it's longer than a fourth and two. If they would have, you know, just been stuffed. But attack another tackle for a loss for this Penn State defense. Fourth and five officially, they say. And it looks like UMass will punt. Yes. Watch a fake and whatever you do, don't jump off sides here. And on the return from the nine is Caden Saunders. Can he make a few men miss? Yes. And he's stiff arm him. That's a good return to the 45-yard line. See, that's what I've been wanting to see. I mean, if they can, you know, do this, you know, time after time, offense ain't going to be in positions that, well, all right, for themselves to potentially go three and out. Or, you know, get some yardage, but then the drive stalls, you know, or whatever it may be. Um, so... They got another good field to work with. See if they can score some more points here. Um, we'll go from there. You know, no doubt about it. I'm taking the punter turn for a touchdown earlier. Would have loved to have seen another punter turn for a touchdown by another player. I might add. You know that 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 been a stat. You know, when was the last time Penn State in the same game had two punt returns for touchdowns by two different players? Came close, but once again, no cigar because they brought him down. But it's a short field to work with. I mean, from the nine yard line, the 45 yard line, the 36 yard difference. Um, yeah, like even if he would have got, you know, 15 yards on that return, but he got double that, you know, and a little more. Um, just you got to keep momentum on your side. You got to keep pushing. You got to keep moving along. You just can't stay still. So, 35 nothing Penn State. Mid third quarter, getting the ball back first and 10. So, once more, thanks for tuning in uh, and listening. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below. Maybe take a shot. Maybe go deep. You know, put them out of their misery. Because no matter what, I repeat, no matter what, throw it deep. That was the interaction with Corey Geiger and James Franklin the other day. Jesus Christ. First and 10 Penn State from the 45 yard line. Aller still in here at quarterback. Ball 46 officially, they say. Singleton to his right. Trips top of your screen, right to left across the double screen, right in on dial. This uh, third quarter, 805 to play. Penn State up uh, five scores. And they'll run it with Singleton, and he gets a first down run with ease. I thought he was going to break that. I mean, he hit the hole and phew, off he went. But, um, oh, don't jinx him. Do not jinx him. 
Drew Aller now has the longest FBS streak to start his career since at least 2015 with 238 consecutive passes without throwing an interception. First and 10, Singleton, another run up the middle. Yeah, they are starting to make some moves up front. Um, got some different uh, linemen in. So the, the linemen on the defense will be different here before too long. The running backs to the receivers to the tight ends, you know, to just every position, you know, and then linebackers, uh, corners and safeties, even, even special teamers, you know. Second and two. Yeah, the more reps, the more use you're going to be. They're going to go deep. Aller in the end zone incomplete, 10 for Lambert Smith. They wanted a, a penalty, and they're not going to get it. Um, see a replay on that. I think he wanted a face mask rather than a uh, pass interference. But, yeah, the more reps you get, the, the more custom you're going to be, more ready you're going to be, you know, to play. Yeah, that's a missed call right there. I don't know how they didn't throw that. They're, I mean, they're letting him play, though. I mean, whether it's incidental contact or not, I mean, is what it is. Fucking play through it. Third and two. Just get the first down. Third and a long, too. And they'll run it. Singleton up the middle. First down run for Penn State. So, just keep running it. Keep running it. But then beat them with the play action. I mean, they've gone deep how many times? But they have not been able to execute. Another handoff to Singleton, and he makes it look easy. He does. Another eight yards. Just like that. So... The other thing, too, about all this, they're putting themselves in manageable situations. It's not third and long. It's either, you know, second and two as it is, they're going to go deep, far side. Oh, he had him. He dropped it. Hit him right in the hands. Tyler Warren incomplete. Oh, my God. That's a touchdown. He walks in on a fucking wheel route. Um, fuck. Third and two. Penn State from the 22, up 35 nothing. 5.55 to play in the third quarter. Trips near side. They'll run it again up the middle. And another first down run for Nick Singleton. I mean, you run another quarterback draw on that. He keeps it for himself. He walks in from 22 yards out. That pass, though, before. That was a draw. That's a touchdown. Shit. Just make up for it though. You gotta, you know, keep pounding it, keep keep moving forward. Just forget about it early, you know. But get back to it. I mean he was he was there. Out of the pistol. And they'll fake the run. Pass to complete to Theo Johnson in the flat, and he's gonna hurdle into the end zone touchdown, Penn State. 41 to nothing. Extra point to come. 5-12 to play this third quarter. Now they're just not running it with ease. They're throwing it with ease. And overall, they're making it look easy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Sucking all the juice uh, out of the UMass Minutemen. What is this, a, a Boston Tea Party homecoming during Penn State's homecoming weekend? Extra point up and good. You can probably start cracking those Sam Adams and putting it back. Forty-two nothing. Penn State now scored more points today than Ohio State did today. Forty-one to seven at Purdue. Of course, that was a conference game, though. But yeah, it's all right. Put the uh, backups in, which. They've started to here and there, you know, stay healthy, 
get healthy if they need to, which some players do for sure, yeah. Um, with, with cheese, with everything on it, extra pickles maybe, I don't know. Um, yeah, 42-0. Um, but start moving on to next week, long story short, yes, for sure. Um, Because truly, honestly, next week's game, they're going to put it out as make or break. I can already see it. When it's only one game, but it's the one game they need to win. Would like to win, I'll say that. Because, you know, they're literally right there. They've been right there. And that's that hump. You know, this game ain't be playing on Wednesday next week, next Saturday at noon. So be sure to tune in. But can they get over that hump? And then if they do, or once they do, you don't want to take a step back, let alone, you know, vice versa on it. If you don't get over the hump and then, you you know, you stay steady as they did last year, and then you still have a successful season, you know, So we'll see what happens. But you still got to get out of this game healthy. And don't give away anything that, you know, which I don't think they really are. Or that teams, other teams don't already know, you know, that, you know, they they haven't not already done or haven't done today or, you know, however you want to put it, just... Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see where we go from here it is the overall, you know, assessment. Because we know how good they are, how good they can be. Once again, they're leaving points off the scoreboard today. It's 42 nothing, 5-12 to play in the third. Where, you know... You're looking at once more another nine to twenty-one points to what they already have. So from forty to fifty, let alone sixty. So, yep, represent Penn State. We are. It's homecoming weekend, so. Once again, shout out to all the um, alumni, the largest alumni association in the world. Fake the give, roll out, and it's incomplete near your side. And UMass has gone to their backup quarterback. All right. From the 25, second and 10. And over the middle, incomplete. Dom DeLuca on the coverage. Probably should have been picked off. That's another thing, too. Like I said, they haven't, you know, forced turnover yet defensively. No doubt about it, one would be nice. Score some points off of it, you know. Might add, they're they're 42-point uh, favorites, so it's a push right now if I want to play in the third. Third and ten. And pass complete. Missed tackle. And then they finally wrap him up. So fourth and three. 
Yeah, Wheatley uh, missed the tackle, but then made up for it. Ended up bringing him down and forcing the punt. UMass has uh, 13 negative yards and 14 plays of zero yards. So they, yeah, do the math. Fourth and two. Watch a fake. Don't jump off sides. They'll punt. And Daquan Hardy on the punt return again. And near side, inside the 40, 35, 30, making men miss. 15, 10, 5. Daquan Hardy with his second punt return touchdown of the game. Forty-eight nothing, extra point to come. You got to go back to Derek Williams. Had a kickoff, punt return, and offensive touchdown all in the same game. I can't even remember the last time Penn State had two punt returns in the same game, though. I just said it a little bit ago for different players, but then boom, here we go again. Daquan Hardy, I think, solidifying himself as the the new punt returner for Penn State. Um, from Penn Hills out of the 412 to the 814. James Franklin's all pumped up, giving him the talk. I mean, hell yeah, brother. I mean, injured UMass defender down in the meantime. Daquan Hardy with 250 yard, give or take, I don't know the exact yardage, but, um, Punt returns for touchdowns today. It bobbled it on the punt. That one was actually a little further. That was probably about 60. And then I thought he was going to be down like right there, like the 15, let on the five because they almost wrapped him up on a shoelace. But then he gets into the end zone and does the uh, swimming celebration. And here comes the extra point. And they're, they're scoring this way, that way. I mean, you get a touchdown. You get a touchdown. You get a touchdown. And extra point up and good. That'll be Sanders to Haydack now in for Alex Falcons. So he had lost his job earlier to Falcons because of the uh, – extra points and field goals he missed earlier in the season. I think Caden Saunders just lost his punt return job because Daquan Hardy in one game had two punt returns for touchdowns. I bet you there's a bet slip out there that somebody had two special teams or defensive touchdowns for Penn State today. And we're going to be like, nah, and then there's the ticket and then there's the winner. Wasn't me. I can guarantee you that, which sucks, but yeah, I was hoping, you know, at some point in time, special teams step the hell up, and they don't do it once, but they do it twice today. So, and I mean, hey, regardless of the weather, they've gone out and scored points. They've gone out and been shutting out their opponents. Like, Seemingly at times it feels like, you know, they play better when it rains or they play better, you know, when, um, you know, there's inclement weather. But then they're also scoring, you know, as many as they did earlier in the year when it was, you know, beautiful out still. So, like, is Pat Hill on the coaching staff? Is, is he saying we're going to – you play you anytime, anywhere, you know, like regardless of the situation, we'll still beat your ass because at times that's what it feels like because that's just how good they are. They're clicking on all cylinders. It's a team sport. It's a team game. Um, you know, they're, they're winning as a team it is the best way I can put it. Um, they're, they're winning as a team. Um, they're 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 in stride. They're they're clicking on all cylinders. 
they are. Um, I mean, they're going to, you know, quote him as the MVP of today's game. I mean, 14 points, you know, to himself. Well, Drew Aller also has two passing touchdowns, rushing touchdown. You know, they have uh, more rushing touchdowns. Um, they still haven't created a turnover, though, defensively, let alone in the defensive score, you know. Um, but then you get, because the defense has just been the stout as they've been, all these punts, you know, UMass has, what, three first downs? Oh, they converted once on third down. You know, they've punted every fucking time. Penn State, first time ever in school history that just happened, but he's the first Big Ten player with two punt returns for touchdowns in the same game since Cavante Martin Manley for Iowa a decade ago. First time ever in Penn State football history they've had two punt returns for touchdowns in the same game by the same player. Goes Daquan Hardy. Derek Williams, that's what I said a little bit ago, First time since him, though. Same game. It was Illinois 08. That whiteout game. He had a kickoff. He had a punt return. And he had an offense touchdown on the same game. So, you know, hey. Put Daquan Hardy back on kicks. UMass hasn't kicked off, though. Except to start the game. Put Daquan Hardy out there on offense. Penn State jumps off sides. All right. So it'd be second in the yard, but yeah, we were wondering where he was first couple weeks of the year. Remember, he was hurt, and then he came on the Illinois game, had an interception, and been been playing pretty damn well ever since. But I think. Today's probably going to top, you know, some some stuff, he, you know, that he's done well in the past because, I mean, he, he's making play after play on defense, and then he has two punt returns for touchdowns in the same game, which is the first time ever that's happened in a Penn State football game in school program history. Like, it's not every day you're, you know – Making new stats that haven't you know been created yet before. Like that's just how good they are. But then once again you don't still don't get too far ahead of yourself. Quarterback draw, they get a first down. Because then next week, is it do they run into a buzzsaw or do they saw some more, you know, and say, no, we're here. You got to go through us. It's not the other way around anymore. So we'll see. But First and 10 after the uh, quarterback draw there on third and short for the first down. 41 yard line, first and 10. Uh, buck 51 and counting to play in the third quarter. And down he goes on the sack, Dom DeLuca. So now they're just gonna, because then everything else fucking to talk about. Um, because of how bad the game is. Um, give us some more videos of uh, former Penn State players talking about Penn State football. Why the hell not, though? We are Penn State. That's a false start. Thank you. Penn State's covering. Can they hit the over-under by themselves again like they've already done a few times?
So second and 15, they'll run it far side, and Devon Ellies wraps him up back of the 30, third and a mile. They will have to snap it here once more um, before the end of the quarter. A six second differential between the game clock and play clock. Third and 20, down in third. Picked off. And Penn State's going to return this for a touchdown. It's Keaton Ellis, but it might be coming back. There's a flag on the play. And there's a fucking dog in the stands. <laughs> we got dogs on the field, too, putting up 49 on UMass. See what the penalty is. Result of a play is an interception. But during the return, got a personal foul. Chop block on the return on Penn State. 15 yards from the spot of the foul. Be Penn State ball first and 10. So they get the interception. All right, now they're plus 12 in the turnover margin. Had the pick six, but it comes back because of a penalty. I'd like to see a replay. But at the end of the third quarter, Penn State leads UMass 49 to nothing. And humans and all the animals, including that dog in the stand, is enjoying this uh, lead and soon-to-be victory to get Penn State to 6-0 and uh, and bull eligible uh, once again. So um, everybody's having a party, and everybody's going to be, you know, partying like Kennedy's tonight. 49 to nothing at the end of the third quarter. College game day just announced. They'll be heading to Columbus next week um, for Penn State, Ohio State. Uh, big noon uh, kickoff for Fox uh, will also be uh, in attendance as the game will be at high noon uh, on Fox 8 here in Happy Valley next Saturday. So I'll have live watch long reactions over on YouTube then, so be sure to tune back in. But uh, in the meantime, we still got 15 to play, 49 nothing. Penn State leads. Uh, UMass, I would think, yeah, we're seeing all the backups at this rate. And I uh, feel bad for Keaton Ellis because uh, he doesn't get his defense touchdown on the pick six because of the penalty. But I would think the offense would, um, would end up scoring here for him anyway, so. We'll see. At least get some points. I mean, like I said, they're already, you know, covering the spread. They score again, they'll hit the over by themselves at 56. I mean, two more field goals, you know, would, would um, push that, let alone a touchdown, and then, you know, you miss the extra point or decide to go for two for whatever fucking reason. Um You know, their, their stats with everything I said coming into today, everything's going to stay the same, let alone, you know, add one more game or uh, add add a few points here or there. Um, if they hold the shutout, that's the stat I'm going to be looking at, though. And I'm going to have to do some digging next week. Um, unless anybody knows, let me know in the comments below. If this shutout holds, don't want to jinx them just yet. But when was the last time Penn State had back-to-back -back home games? Because they went on the road in between. It'd be a different story if it was just back-to-back -back games in general. But back-to-back -back home games that they shut out their opponent in. Because from what I can recall... It's been quite a while, if ever before. I mean, shit, because we're creating stats as we go today because Daquan Hardy's two punt returns for touchdowns, first time ever that's happened in Penn State football history. 
So first and ten, Bo Perbule in at quarterback. They call him the pride of York. Quarterback keeper, no gain in the play, second down and ten. So And rightfully so, he's chewing his ass out because, I mean, it's just stupidity. I mean, if they could clean up this, clean up that, don't shoot themselves in the foot. Once again, like I said, they've left a max of, well, now you're looking at 28 points off the board with that pick six. Unless they can, you know, make up for it here and score. Uh, so still 21, you know, so you're, you're looking at, you know, 70 on the board. Um, let alone another couple field goals for, you know, nine points at, you know, 58. So, got a dead ball foul on UMass. 15 yards on automatic first down on the unsportsmanlike conduct. All right. So... From the uh, 35 yard line, first and 10 after the penalty. And Prabula, quarterback draw up the middle, inside the 30, still run down to the 18. He just followed his blockers and, and kept running. That's exactly what you want to do as a runner just follow your blockers and run. Keep running. Another UMass injury. First and 10, Penn State, though, inside the red zone. As we got 14 minutes and 21 seconds to the play. Penn State's up 49. They're going to win. Um, we'll see what the final score is, but win on this uh, very date. At home for the first time since World War II, back to 1944, when they beat Bucknell that day 20-6. to They've won on this day since then, but it's, everything's been on the road. They haven't played at home and won on this day uh, since then. They played at home and lost on this day, before, you know, since then, but haven't won on this day at home since then. So, and you're looking at if they can score here again, 36 consecutive quarters, which, well, that pick six is given the third, but. I mean, just everything is going their way. I get the opponent, but they're still doing this against, you know, conference opponents too. And that's why I said for next week now, is it, okay, do they run into a buzzsaw or are they going to be sawing? So, it's going to be make or break a week from now. But do what you got to do to win. So, commercial break. We'll get back to the action shortly. Um, got some other good games on, uh, for what it's worth. I mean, I'm, I'm not paying that close attention. Or as, you know, close as I normally would. But... We'll see what Penn State does here to close it out. Because then this is also, an, you know, experience, um, quality reps to build towards the future, you know? Like, you think they're good now, just just wait, you know, until whenever, you know, however long you want to push it forward, that you'll look back, well, it's because they played here, they played there, you know. Trouble with the snap, but Biola gets it down, and then quarterback keeper, and then maybe a late hit. No. He took a shot going out of bounds. He just made something out of nothing and got five yards. Second and five. 
So keep running it. Bill going to throw on a fade in the end zone. Incomplete, intended for uh, Omari Evans from Colleen, Texas. Um, got a flag at the line of scrimmage, and then a flag because he completely fucking shoved him away uh, to catch the ball, and he still dropped it because it was overthrown. So the P.I. is going to be on Penn State. See what the first penalty is because they might offset that. And then they'll replay the down second and five. But then if they're both against Penn State, they'll enforce the one. Two fouls. All right, got an offside. That's declined. And then they say pass interference on UMass rather than Penn State. Spot of the foul, which was right inside the five, it looked like. So it should be first and goal Penn State. Punch it in. Ball at the two. First and goal. Prabula with Trey Potts to his left out of the gun. Will hand off. Touchdown, Penn State. And make it 55 to nothing, which is the over under. Extra point would hit the over. No cover. Minus a billion. Make it a trillion on the money line or a gazillion. But. They're. Regardless of the opponent, you know, clicking on all cylinders. Here's the extra point. Which is up and good. 56 nothing, Penn State. Some updated stats. Drew Aller are going to finish officially sixteen to twenty-three, a buck sixty-two, and three touchdowns. And then he also had a rushing touchdown on a sneak. Two of his passing touchdowns were to Theo Johnson. The other two, Tyler Warren. So all three to the tight ends. Um, so three passing touchdowns, three rushing touchdowns. Nick Singleton, 15 carries, 79 yards rushing. Katron Allen, nine for 6'9 and a score. Perbula, three carries, 20 yards. And then Trey Potts with a carry there for the two yard touchdown. Aller, of course, with a quarterback sneak. Uh, Penn State receiving once more. Theo Johnson, 466, two touchdowns. Uh, Harrison Walls, 3 of 44. Lambert Smith, 6 of 30. And then Tyler Warren, two catches, 14 yards, and the other touchdown. Fat Man, a catch rate yards out of the backfield in the screen game. Uh, Penn State did turn it over once offensively, did turn it over once more. On special teams, um, they had a pick six. That got called back because of a penalty. They still score on the drive anyway. Um, so you're still looking at another max of you know 21 points at 77, let alone 59, 62, 65. If there's you know field goals, uh, scoring drives, uh, let alone anything in between for you know scoring drives, points left off the board, you know from earlier, even though they've you know scored. Mainly on everything else. I mean, shit, they've only punted once. Um, and that was the second drive of the game because they turned it over on the first drive. And then after that, Daquan Hardy with his first of two punt returns for touchdowns. 
Um, there's the Nittany Lion. As he takes selfies with uh, the fans. Where's that dog in the stands at? I think he, he might need to be at every Penn State game now moving forward. Penn State with a kickoff out of bounds. Jesus Christ. Fucking 35-40 yard line now for UMass. So they, yeah, clean up the little things, you know. Everything's perfect then, which ain't always going to be that way. But, I mean, still, I mean, you'd like it to, you know, be smooth sailing as, as best you can. But at the end of the day, I guess it just is what it is. You know, because you're not going to be scoring as many points as you have today, let alone all season long, against everybody, you know. Let alone, you know, continue to shut people out, let alone doing this right or wrong or whatnot. That pass incomplete. Another flag on the play. So. Got a personal foul roughing the pass or automatic first down. So can you hold this shutout? I mean, you just had a kickoff out of bounds and a personal foul on back-to-back -back plays. And now they're going to be in Penn State territory. Come on, defense. Yeah, ball midfield. First and 10, UMass. 13.33 to play. And they'll hand it off. And five yards. Second down. Yep. And we'll see who comes out on top, yeah. Quarterback keeper. They give the first down, but then they finally bring him down. Son of a bitch. Yeah, you're looking at, can you hold the shutout? Because, yeah, like I said, when was the last time Penn State had back-to-back -back home shutouts? Another second and five coming up. And maybe a fumble on the snap. They recovered it though. So third and six, third and seven. Third and seven officially. And they bring pressure. Pass. Incomplete, they say. The first down marker hit the ground. 
So you mask the punt. Are they going to go for it? Looks like they'll punt. And then UMass gets a uh, penalty for 12 on the field. Uh, still fourth down, but fourth and 12 now. Good thing that wasn't on Penn State because it would be fourth and two then for, uh, for UMass and they'd probably go for it. So UMass on to punt. Pin and Penn State deep. Fair catch single four, but it'll go into the end zone for a touchback. First and 10 eight lines from the 20. Up 56 nothing with 10.45 to play. As I try to find out if ever before, when was the last time um, Penn State had back to back home shutouts? Because it's getting to that point. If anybody knows or wants to do some research of their own, and you want to let me know in the comments below. Greatly appreciated. Thanks for tuning in and listening. But I guarantee you it's, it's been a while if, if it's ever happened before. Um, I mean, this is now the third consecutive year they've had at least... one shutout during the season and that's from um, Indiana to Maryland to Iowa Every one of those shutouts, other than the Indiana game, has been played in the rain. So they're using it to their advantage. And it's it's credit to the defense, you know, because they're one, you know, making the stops and making the shutout. Um, but it's back-to-back -back games. Back to back home games. Like I said, I'm gonna have to do some digging for next for next week and see if I can figure out uh, if it's ever happened before. Um, I have a feeling it has, but I, I'm not 100 percent certain. Um, I don't know if they're gonna say anything, whether they, you know, end of this game or not. If they even know. Um, yeah, I have a feeling it's happened before, but it might not have. I don't know. It might be brand new. Might have never done it before. But if they have, I think it's been quite a while. But then now this will be... Back-to-back -back shutouts, of course, but then two you know, shutouts um, in, in the same season. Oh, shit. That's a good stat right there. Penn State with the 0-1 Miami Hurricanes. 40-plus points per game and fewer than 10 points allowed um, since 2000. It's Miami and it's Penn State. And remember, in 0-1, Miami came up here to start the season. That's when Talaferro walked back out on the field. But Miami went on and won the national championship that year. I'm not saying anything but other than what they just stated. Okay? But catch my drift. We'll see, you know, about that sack come mid-January. Third and two Penn State here, under 10 to play. This team has been so darn good, damn good. You know, they're, they're winning as a team. They're scoring on offense, defense, and special teams, and they're making stops when they need to. 
you know. Well, technically, I mean, okay, they're plus 11 in the turnover uh, margin. They turn it over twice themselves, so that's plus 9. They get the interception, that's plus 10. Not plus 12, as I stated earlier. It's plus 10 now in the turnover margin. Of course, you get the two-point return for touchdowns, too. That helps out, but... Um, Yeah, I'd like to know if ever before. Um, I have a feeling it's happened before. I don't know, though. I'll have to look. Surprisingly, yes, I don't know. Um, they've had you know, back-to-back home shutouts. They might, they might hold off on that stat for the bottom ticker at the end of the game. Because it might be the first time ever, for all we know. Um, might have happened before. I have a feeling once again it has. It's just been a while. But then it's still three straight years. They've had at least one, if not two now, if this score holds, or just the shutout holds, uh, that they've had at least one uh, shutout at home per season. Three years running. So That's just how good this defense is. You know? And then the offense is rolling. Um, you know, scoring on three passing touchdowns, three rushing touchdowns, two punt returns for touchdowns, for the eight total touchdowns, and think, they've left points off the board, too. Like I said, they've left a max of 21 points off the board. It could be 77 or nothing right now. It could be, what I say, you know, field goals at 59 to 62 to 65 to nothing right now. It could be 68, could be, you know, 71, 74, could be, you know, anywhere in between as they're jumping around. Got a good one on Fox. You want to talk about a low-scoring defensive showdown, a barn burner. There you go, in the Big Ten. But it's 56-0, Penn State on top of UMass. And the offense uh, has a third and two here. Uh, from the 28-yard line, Perbillo handoff. Up the middle, is that Tank Smith? Yeah, Tank Smith moving forward. For a Penn State first down. There we go. I was talking about that earlier. Yeah. First and ten from the thirty. Very cross in motion. For Bill, will hand off again. Tank Smith. Off to the races, out past midfield. 40, 35, stiff arm at the 30 before he goes out. Tank Smith blowing up UMass's defense. Hell yeah, man. Tank Smith getting some playing time here. And that's a bus one there. Keep running it. Keep fucking running. Ain't run up the score if you keep running and they can't fucking stop you. From the 31, first and 10. Prabula quarterback draw. He gets a first down inside the 20, 15, 10, 5, stumbles. He's in the end zone, though. Touchdown, Penn State. Boom. 62 to nothing. Extra point to come with 8.28 to play. 5 and State. That's what I, I've said. If they, you know, get to the point, you want to run a two-quarterback system, by all means, be my guest. Keep the defense off balance, you know. 
Prabula on to hold this extra point after uh, rushing uh, for a 31-yard touchdown. Extra point up and good. Penn State leads UMass 63 to nothing. They have now scored 63, not once, but twice this season. They beat Delaware 63 to 7 a month ago. They lead UMass 63 to nothing here today. So we go to break. 8.28 to play. Add on to the stats for Buell now. Six carries, um, 59 yards rushing, and the touchdown. Tank Smith, two carries, 41 yards rushing. As he almost went the distance on the previous play before the touchdown. And... I'm not saying they're unstoppable, but they're pretty hard to stop. Penn State kicks it away. Return from the goal line. And maybe the 20. So could they bring up Penn State, Michigan, and Ohio State, the beast of the East in the Big Ten. But yeah, Penn State plays at Ohio State next week, and then Michigan comes here on November 11th, Veterans Day. Yeah, Michigan will host Ohio State in the game Thanksgiving weekend. Penn State actually plays the night before on Black Friday night uh, at Michigan State, but the game will be in Detroit at Ford Field. Two yards, make a second and eight for UMass. Second and eight, they're on a screen near side, a couple yards. Be third down and about three, third and four. Penn State now averaging 44 on offense while only giving up. As I do the math. Eight points a game. So that's a touchdown and a, a two-point try. Still got seven minutes to play, though. First and ten UMass. As Penn State um, might add, um, recently, they've had some former Nittany Lions go um, play for the Minutemen. First off, it was Alex Kenny uh, from State College. Um, played for Joe Paterno, Bill O'Brien, and James Franklin uh, before he transferred to UMass. Um, and then we'll give Adam Brenneman a pass because him and Christian Hackenberg came to Penn State when, you know, they... Uh, didn't have to, but they held the fort down, and um, I think people started to realize that, that, 
You know, whether they were good or bad, on or off the field, um, they did more for the long term uh, in, in Penn State football history than, you know, could ask for. Um, so, of course, thanks to them and thanks to everybody who stayed in 2012 and everybody who's come to Penn State since, everybody who's, you know, worn blue and white uh, before and in the future. You know, it's Generations of Greatness today. It's homecoming weekend. I know it's rainy, but at the end of the day, a win's a win. Um, Ty Rudolph is actually playing for UMass currently. Uh, he was on Penn State within the past few years and, and transferred um, with this transfer portal era in NIL and all that jazz and college football nowadays. But um, UMass first down, first and 10 here under five to play now, 63 uh, 0 Penn State. So, can they hold the shutout? Is what, is what I'm looking at. And then I'd like to know the stat. Back to back home games, has it ever been done before? We're shutting out their opponents in back to back home games or not? And if so, when? Because if it, I have a feeling if it has happened before, it's been like over 100 years. Because back then it was like, you know, 6 4 all the time, you know, or everything was tied, you know, shit like that. But another second down and five. So UMass is now getting the manageable situations they probably would have loved to had earlier, you know, rather than, you know, second, third, long, it's second, five, third, and three, first down. You know, like if you do something good, you would think something good is going to come after it, you know, rather than something bad. But guess what comes around goes around, or what goes around comes around. Um, quarterback keeper, they get a few yards there before they bring him down. So third down. Yeah, can they score 70? They won't unless they get a defense touchdown. Because the offense ain't going to do anything. Because then people would say, well, they were running the score up, you know, because they were running the ball. Of course, you don't have a Miami situation from last week. Um, let alone a Colorado situation from last night. But um, you just need out, you know. Third down three, UMass in Penn State territory at the 45. They'll tuck it and run. And out of bounds it goes. First down, but... They're getting closer. Come on, defense. Let's go. Penn State jumps off sides. They'll blow it dead, though, rather than give them a free play. So that's a free five yards. Yeah, the penalties are starting to rack up now. Like, come on, guys. Handoff on first and five. They stuff him. He might have got a yard. Second down, though, and four. Two, 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 and counting to play. Might be a first down, might not be a first down, depending on the spot here. It's going to be short, it looks like. Third and about a yard. Thank you. 
UMass looks near side of the sideline. They got two timeouts. Penn State with three. They burned all three of their first half ones in the final minute. Got the ball back, but then remember that turnover. Or else potentially they might have been able to score some more. Um, the play game, yeah. I say false start. So third and six now. Minute six to play. Third and six here under a minute to go. Penn State chases them. Pass thrown incomplete. Almost had him on the sack, but here's your ball game, folks. Fourth and six with 43 seconds to go. Penn State trying to hold the shutout on the Massachusetts Minutemen, otherwise known as UMass. 63 to nothing. And fourth and six. Here we go. And down the middle. It's incomplete. Turner on downs. Penn State can knee it from here. That snap at once, game's over. And Penn State will defeat UMass or maybe take that M out and that's how they played because that's who they are. Uh, um, 63 nothing your final score. Um, so. Penn State gonna be 6-0, bull eligible, regards what happens the rest of the way. But next week, they go to Ohio State. So, we'll get more into that game in a minute. But Penn State can kneel it out, and they will do just that. There you go. That'll be all she wrote. Penn State defeats UMass 63 to nothing. UMass will be off next week before they play Army. Penn State at Ohio State next Saturday at high noon. And I'll have live watch long reactions live right here on YouTube. So be sure to tune back in. Talk about a team win. Three, two, one, win. We are Penn State. They've now won 11 consecutive by at least 14 plus points or more, which is still the longest streak in the country. And it's the longest Big Ten streak over the last 100 years, which is absolutely absurd. James Franklin interview post game. Penn State 6 0 for the first time since 2019. Um, sure. Yeah, talk about the balance, talk about the consistency. Scoring any which way. Yeah, for sure. Technically, that is right, yeah, because they were 5 no lost to Michigan, beat Minnesota, lost to Ohio State. And then they haven't lost since. <laughs> For sure. I mean, he already had a job, but he's earned himself more of a role. Enjoy it. 63 to nothing, your final score, and it's one game at a time. And they're going to work on their next opponent, which is Ohio State.
<laughs> He's gonna smile a little bit more on TV here as he stares down the camera in the pouring down rain. And when it rains, it pours. Penn State beats UMass 63 to nothing. Back-to-back -back home shutouts for the Nittany Lions. Still working to see if that's first time ever. And if it's happened before, first time since when, I'll let you know more on that next week. Uh, as they show off highlights. I mean, just credit to this team. Offense, defense, special teams. They're scoring three passing touchdowns. They're scoring three rushing touchdowns. The defense holds another shutout. I don't care the opponent. A shutout is a shutout. You know, it could be against the best team. It could be against the worst team. It could be against a team somewhere in the middle. But a shutout is a shutout. And then they're scoring on special teams once again, finally. They did not do it only once. They did it twice. And it was by Daquan Hardy, the first time ever in Penn State football history that the same player has returned two punt returns for touchdowns in the same game. They're not making stats or adding on to stats. They're making them. They're creating them. That's how fucking good they are right now. So next week is mentioned, uh, UMass will be off on a bye before they play at Army, Penn State, at Ohio State. Um, a big win. That's a team win. 63 nothing. your final score. Um, they're averaging 44 a game now while only giving up eight. Um, make it 11 straight games with at least three sacks because they had six in the first half, for God's sakes. We'll get to the final stats here in a minute. But that's going to be tied or the nation's longest streak um, entering next week. I assume they still lead the country in time of possession. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute as well, as they have scored now in 36 consecutive quarters, uh, dating back to late last year. They haven't lost since they lost to Ohio State last year. And guess what? They play at Ohio State next week. So, like I said earlier, are they going to run into a buzzsaw with as good as they are? Or are they going to be the saw? It's spooky season, so... And Friday the 13th was last night. I'd hope they're the latter. And... They're cracking nuts next week. We'll see, though. So be sure to tune back in. Penn State's now scored 30-plus... In 13 consecutive games, which is still the nation's longest streak. 11 straight games won by at least 14 plus points or more. Nation's longest streak as well. But it's the first time in 100 years that's been done in Big Ten football history. Which that's, that's absurd. That's a little hard to believe right there. The stat I want to know, though, and if anybody knows, let me know in the comments below. I'm going to have to do some digging. I'll let you know next week. But back-to-back -back home shutouts. Because they just shut out Iowa. Yeah, they went to Northwestern. Wasn't back-to-back -back shutout games. Home or away, neutral site. Back-to-back -back home shutouts. Iowa, yeah, they played at Northwestern. Had a black. Another shutout today. Back-to-back -back home shutouts for the blue and white Penn State Indian Lions. I'm going to do some research and figure out if it's the first time ever that's been done as well or first time since fill in the blank. And I, uh, as I've said, I have a feeling it's been done before, but it might not have been. I don't know, so I'm going to have to look it up. But if it has been done, I feel like it's been a long-ass time since that's happened. But it could be wrong, though, too. It could be, you know, recent, and I'm just not thinking straight. Um, as Penn State's now 4-2 while wearing Generations Greatness throwback uniforms. They're 74, 24, and 5 all-time on homecoming. They win 
on this very date, October the 14th, at home for the first time since World War II, which is 1944, when they beat Bucknell 20-6. to There were more than a total of 26 points scored uh, today than there was then. It was 63-0 Penn State on top of UMass. So, like I said, they're clicking on all cylinders. I don't care who the hell they're playing. You know, put them up against some of the best teams in the country. I would believe in this defense. I would believe in this offense. Special teams finally came around. I would believe in them now, too. Even though I already have. You know, was just hoping... You know, special teams at some point in time would, you know, come around. And like I said earlier, yeah, no doubt about it. Take the one partner return for touchdown, let alone the two. No doubt about it. Hell yeah. It was just hoping for a decent return. They do even more than that, by all means. And the thing, they left a max of 21 points off the board. The two drives to begin the game in the drive right before halftime. Just imagine, just think, hypothetically. I know it didn't happen, but just think. They score three touchdowns there. Add on to the 63 they have. That's 84 to nothing. I believe the Penn State record is either 84 or 88 against Cincinnati back in the 80s, if I'm not mistaken. But then anywhere in between from the 63 to, you know, three field goals, 66, 69, 72. They scored 79 against Idaho back to begin 2019. That was the last time they started 6-0 as well, 2019. They're 6-0 again here uh, four years later. Went to a New Year's Six uh, bowl game and won that season. Coming off of a New Year's Six bowl game and win last season as well. All the momentum in the entire world is on their side right now, it feels like. But next week they go to Ohio State, and we know they haven't won in Columbus since 2011. They haven't beaten the Buckeyes overall since uh, Marcus Allen blocked a field goal and Grant Haley returned it. Uh, What would be officially seven years minus one day to the day that Penn State last beat Ohio State back in 2016. It was October 22nd, 2016. They meet October 21st next Saturday, 2023. So, um, man, they're just in full stride winning left and right with offense, with defense, with special teams. You know, you got to give it to them. Um, And you got to, you know, from the good to the bad or vice versa, you got to go through some hard times to get the good times. We've been there, done that from 20 to 21. 11-11 11 and 11 overall entering last year. They win 11 games last year, win the Rose Bowl. They haven't lost since they lost to Ohio State Halloween weekend last year. And they go to the shoe next week, take on the Buckeyes. Now they're 6 and 0. It'll be a potential top five, depending on what else happens or how the rate rankings shake out tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Let alone a you know, top six showdown um, in the Big Ten. The big one in the Big Ten. The big battle between the Buckeyes and the Nitwits. Be live high noon, 12 p.m. Eastern time on Fox. And I'll have live watch on reactions over on YouTube, so be sure to tune in uh, then. But it's a team sport. It's a team game. If they go to Ohio State next week and lose, well, they lose as a team. It wasn't because of this or that, even though it'll circle down to that. Um, they not necessarily unstoppable, but they can't be stopped. I know I just contradicted myself with that statement. It doesn't make any fucking sense in the world, 
but it's true. They've had some big games so far this year. They've had some, you know, um, you know, tough non-conference and conference, uh, you know, home games, if you will, because that's what they've been um, with West Virginia and Iowa. And they put up 30 plus on both the Mountaineers and Hawkeyes. And both of those teams are pretty good. Um, and you want them to continue to win. No doubt about it. Make Penn State look even better. Um, it's a quality win, you know, looking back on it. Um, whereas at the point in time when it happened, you know, all right, we'll see what happens. Um, but, uh, you know, yeah, they've gone on the road. But Illinois and Northwestern aren't Ohio State, for one. Let alone, you can't start slow like you did both games uh, out in the land of Lincoln. You can't. They're going to have to, next week, force and capitalize off turnovers and um, rely on special teams with a running game up front and Drew Aller to not make any mistakes to have a chance to win. At least to give them their best chance to win, I'll say that. Because they still got a lot to clean up, no doubt about it. You know, they're starting a little bit to make mistakes in the turnover category, offensively. Where the defense is now, if I'm not mistaken, because like I said, I was doing the math earlier, it was plus 11 entering the day. They turned it over twice, so it's plus nine, but then they got a you know, pick six that they call back, but they ended up scoring on the drive anyway. So I believe they're plus ten, you know, in the turnover margin. But then they've turned the ball over once on special teams, make it twice on special teams now overall in the season, and then once offensively. You know, so a ten to, you know, three margin, I'll I'll take it, you know. There's seven, you know, differential there. Um I mean they're still ten plus ten in the turnover margin now. Um, means they've, you know, gotten a total with their minuses, a total of 10 turnovers off their opponents, uh, to put it nicely, easiest way to explain it. Um, so, yeah, I think that's what, it's going to come down to explosive play zone and can, can they can they you know make plays? Um, because if not, let alone can't stop it, it it's going to be. Oh, here we go again. You know, same old, same old. Like they're good, but then they're not great. But you still can't take away everything you know they've they've done to this point. So, uh, it's a big win, team win today. Um, 63 to nothing is your final score. Pull up some final stats here. As they just keep on fucking rolling. So, roll on their 18-wheeler out to Columbus next week, and let's see if Penn State can win in the shoe for the first time in 12 years and defeat the Ohio State Buckeyes. That's why they play the game, folks. Inside on paper, it's on the field. Because let me fucking guarantee you this. Everybody and their mother, okay, and grandmother and great-grandmother and so on and so forth, you want to, you know, do your ancestry this week, by all means, go ahead. Everybody's going to be saying Penn State doesn't have a chance next week at Ohio State. Bull fucking shit, Okay. I'm not saying they're going to go out and win. And I'm not saying they have a 50-50 chance on, you know, winning either because that's just a fucking given at the start, okay? But this Penn State team ain't your father's, grandfather's, great-grandfather's Penn State team. 
This team can be very, very special. And it's just the fact of that hump, if you will. Can they get over that hump? Can they beat Ohio State? Can they beat Michigan? Because 95% of the time, they beat everybody else. You know? Unless they're just absolute, you know, trash. Like they were, you know, the first half of 20 and the second half of 21. And then it was into last year once again. Okay, what team are we getting? They win 11 games, win the Rose Bowl, and they're off to 6 0 start here today. So, yeah, they're not going to have a fucking chance on paper next week. I can guarantee you that. They'll probably be, if I'd have to guess, a touchdown underdog going into next week, if not more. Nobody will be giving Penn State a chance. But then, you know, knock on wood, say your prayers, um, you know, when they do the unthinkable, everybody's going to be in shock that, oh, you know, Ohio State lost. They got upset. Well, technically, I guess you could say it's an upset because of the ranking, you know, because Ohio State's going to be third, Penn State right now sixth. We'll see if anything changes. Like I said, though, if it's a top five, it's going to be a definite top, top six matchup. Um, so it's still one game at a time, though, you know, because you don't want to get – that was the thing I was saying earlier. You don't want to get too far ahead of yourself and look to next week. Um you know, and because it wasn't looking great early today, even though they had all the momentum in the world from the get-go. They just weren't executing, you know. Just think, you know, they, they scored more points than they did today. Not necessarily next week, just overall in total today. I mean, because they left how many points off the board once more, okay? Um... Max a 20, one, minimum a three, anywhere in between uh, is how I look at it because they had good field. They were right there, and then turnovers or then the sack and then the punt, you know. But look at those deep shots, you know. Like, that's what I'm saying. Next week, explosive plays. Can they execute? Can they stop it? Can they run the ball up front? Can they stop the run? You know, Drew Aller going back to his home state. He's from funky, cold Medina, Ohio. And it somehow, for whatever fucking reason, always works out this way. Ohio quarterbacks come to Penn State when Pennsylvania quarterbacks leave to go to Ohio State or Michigan or elsewhere. We've seen that time and time again. That's nothing new. And it Plays in the next week's game. Kyle McCord from Pennsylvania, Ohio State's quarterback. Drew Aller from Ohio, Penn State's quarterback. So, you know, we'll see if history repeats itself, you know, one way or the other, with um, good or bad or however you want to put it once again. Um, but yeah, nobody, nobody's going to be giving Penn State a chance next week. I can tell you that much. Which, not necessarily is a shame, but um, it'll be the the argument of well, I haven't seen him play when I've seen Ohio State play. You know, it's fucking twenty twenty three, folks. It's not, you know, nineteen. 44, the last time Penn State won on this day at home. Um, and, you know, we're in the middle of a world war, and everybody's living under a rock. <laughs> um, like, you can watch these games. You can figure out what the hell happened. Or you, you, you'll you base it off of, you know, previous games. Because that's the other thing, too. When Penn State and Ohio State have met, man, it's it's been so close at times. And then they just, you know, come up short in the end. I'm going to say letting it slip away, 
but then they're just right there. And then they just, like next week, they need to grab the bull by the fucking horns and crack nuts. That's what the New Lions need to do next week at Ohio State. Like, don't let go until you land back in Happy Valley afterwards. But then, even if you would win next week, you don't want to you know be too high on your horse because then Indiana comes in. And we should know the kick time to that game Monday at the earliest, let alone on a six-day window a week from tomorrow. Um, it's definitely either going to be 12 or 3.30. Um, don't know the network by any means because we don't know any of that great comp. Um, so we'll see. But it, it's still one game at a time. It's one of the mentality. It's what's in front of you, and next is Ohio State. So I stand by with everything I just said. And if you agree with me, okay. If you disagree with me, okay. Let me know in the comments below. Um, but, but today's game, today's win for Penn State, 6-3 to nothing, um, a team win. I mean, they, they were clicking on all cylinders. In the monsoon, 6-3 um, to nothing, your final score. Uh, had three passing touchdowns. Had three rushing touchdowns. Make it four rushing touchdowns, excuse me. Um, had two punt returns for touchdowns. I mean, the defense played a solid first half. Um, you know, I get they were playing a lot of backups. I mean, they were giving up more first downs in the second half. Um, but they were still making plays. You know, Penn State only punted once today. Like, when was the last time that happened? You know, sad I want to know once more. When was the last time, if ever before, Penn State had back-to-back home shutouts in the same season. Not from the last game, the first game, the next season. No. Same season. When was the last time Penn State had back-to-back home shutout wins? Because today, in the 6-3-0 win for the Nittany Lions over the UMass Minutemen, As a couple of these other games um, come down to wire, as we're quarter past seven now on the East Coast, these night games are about to begin as well. see who ends up winning and, and losing and at some point in time we'll, we'll update you know stats and scores overall for college football uh, for everything that's happened thus far this season uh, at a later date as um, just for whatever reason this year to the point in time of getting to that really haven't got to it and I mean, like I said, yeah, I want to go fucking celebrate this one. You know, we, we should all be celebrating like Kennedy's night. You know, Penn State beats Massachusetts 63 to nothing. Like enough fucking said. Of course, just don't do anything stupid. But Drew Aller in Penn State's win, which was 63 to nothing once again on UMass. And you can take out the M and that's how the Minutemen played. Because that's who they are. As it wasn't the British coming, it was the New Lions. Drew Aller was 16 and 23, 160 yards passing, and three passing touchdowns. Two to Theo Johnson and one to Tyler Warren. And then, oh, yeah, wait, I might add, he had a rushing touchdown as well on a quarterback sneak. So Drew Aller, 28 points. Nick Singleton had 15 carries, 79 yards rushing. Katron Allen, 9 for 6-9 and a touchdown. Bo Perbula, 6 carries, 59 yards rushing and a touchdown from 31 yards out in relief in the fourth quarter. Tank Smith had a big run. Almost broke it, but then the play later was Perbula's touchdown. Tank Smith, 2 carries, 41 yards rushing. 
Trey Potts had a goal line touchdown from a yard out. Drew Aller had his quarterback sneak for a touchdown as well. So three passing touchdowns, four rushing touchdowns. Theo Johnson, four catches, 66 yards receiving, and two touchdowns. Tyler Warren, two of 14. And the other uh, receiving touchdown, so all three passing touchdowns were to the tight ends, which thank God they finally got them and kept them involved today. Uh, good to see Harrison Wallace back as well. Uh, he had uh, three catches, 44 yards receiving. Keandre Lambert Smith, six for 30. Their third receiver is truly the tight end. Um, I mean, shit, we didn't see really any of the third, fourth, fifth, sixth string receivers today. We didn't. Um, at the same point in time, though, we really didn't need to because Penn State as a team ran the ball for 37 times for 246 yards rushing and four touchdowns. You know, and you don't want to, you know, give away anything that you plan on doing next week, let alone the rest of the season. So maybe next week some of those guys make some plays for all we know. Um, we'll see. That would definitely be the game to step the fuck up. Um Screen game, only catch eight yards tonight. You'd probably like them to, you know, run that a little bit more, but when you're running the ball as good as they are, you know, and Aller's comfortable in the pocket and, you know, able to, you know, throw it downfield um, b- because of how good the protection is up front. You know, they took shots for Corey Geiger. Fuck it. No matter what, we're throwing it deep. They just couldn't execute. Um, so we'll, we'll see if they, you know, Stick to that, get back to it, you know, move away from it and, you know, like, because I could see next week they they have, like, a lead, you know, and then they just do fucking something stupid with a play call or they turn it over or something just fucking asinine. And then that's why they end up losing the fucking game. Because how many times has that happened before with Penn State football? You know, against, you know, good opponents in big games. I mean, yeah, time and time again, just don't want to throw it out there because it might happen, but we'll see what happens next week. Um, and then, man, this defense, as yeah, Penn State turned it over twice today, but they made up for uh, the one, got the ball back off and scored off of it when it was a pick six with coming to call back. So they had a plus 10 in the turnover margin on the season. Curtis Jacobs and Devon Elliott led the team in total tackles with five. But then overall as a team, they had seven sacks. Adisa Isaac had two and a half. Cam Miller had two. Chop Robinson had two. And then I Dennis Sutton uh, had a half a sack. Tackles for loss. Adisa Isaac had three and a half. Devon Elliott had two and a half. Chop Robinson had two, which, of course, you know, these tackles for loss and sacks, if they equal out, they equal out. That's what it was. Let another tackle or another tackle for loss or just it adds up. You know, the, the little things sometimes make the most difference. So next week, take your points, but you also want to take your chances. So where was I? Seven sacks, officially 14 tackles for loss. Yeah, Deesa Isaac, two and a half sacks. Chop Robinson, along with Cam Miller, two sacks apiece. Denied Dennis Sutton a half a sack. Uh, Deesa Isaac had three and a half tackles for loss. Devon Elliott, two and a half tackles for loss. Cam Miller had two tackles for loss. Chop Robinson had two tackles for loss. Uh, Curtis Jacobs, Abdul Carter, and Kobe King um, all had tackles for loss. Deny Dennis Sutton as well on a half, along with Izzard. I mean, shit, there's a ton of players today. Uh, offense, defense, um, special teams for that matter, too, is Daquan Hardy. Remember, two punt returns for touchdowns today. First time ever that has happened in Penn State football history. That the same player had two punt returns for touchdowns in the same game. 
But there are a lot of players that names I didn't say today. You know, good or bad. You know, like hopefully next week though, I'm saying them all. Yeah, Falcons was good on his six extra points. They brought in Sanders Haydack. He was good on his three. They only punted once. UMass seemingly punted on every drive other than before the half and then if they went for it or not. Um, which, did they? I'm going to have to look that up. Um, but Penn State on those punts, two punt returns for touchdowns. UMass punted every single drive except for when they had the end of the half, the pick six that got called back, but it was still an interception, so Penn State ball, and then the offense still scored on it, and then a turnover on downs to end the game. UMass was close to getting in field goal range, but they didn't even attempt a field goal because they get shut out. They punted every drive other than, once again, going into halftime, interception, and a turnover on downs. That's how stout this Penn State team is and this Penn State defense is. Wow. Washington's going to beat Oregon 36-33 to because Oregon misses a potential game-tying uh, field goal to force overtime. What a game. And Iowa just beat Wisconsin 15-6. to They both, like, simultaneously went final. So that's a big win for Iowa. That's even bigger for Penn State. So go Hawks. We are Penn State. Um, of course, Oregon and Washington joining the Big Ten along with USC and UCLA. The start of next season. And with the 2024 schedule that was released along with 25, 26, 27, and 28, Penn State next year, even though they go to Ohio State next week and then host Indiana before they go to Maryland on somebody's birthday. And then on Veterans Day, host Michigan, host Rutgers a week later, and then they go to Michigan State on Black Friday night. Big Ten championship game a week later. We'll see if they're there or not. And then it's bowl season. And in 2024, though, Penn State's three non-conference games will be at West Virginia and then Bowling Green and Kent State. Then all dates to be determined in conference. Penn State will play in no particular order. And it's still going to be weird. And it's going to take a lot of time to get used to USC, UCLA, Oregon, and Washington in the Big Ten. You know, normally you'd think that as of a, you know, non-conference game, let alone a bowl game. You know, but no, they're going to be conference opponents starting next year. Um, no particular order because date's still to be determined. You know, it could be anywhere from the start to the end of the season. Penn State will go to Minnesota. Purdue. Wisconsin and USC. Once again, at West Virginia start the year. So that big non-conference game is on the road because they hosted them this year. Also host Bowling Green and Kent State. And then in conference in the Big Ten, Penn State will host Illinois, Maryland, Ohio State, UCLA, and Washington. But all Penn State should be worried about right now 
is Ohio State next week. So I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to get in 25, let alone 26, 27, or 28. As everybody's going to play each other eventually with the new Big Ten being at 18 teams. And we'll talk more all about that later. But that was the, the news recently that you know came out while Penn State was on a bye. So I figured at some point in time today I'd bring it up and discuss it. So there's that. But yeah, all Penn State should be worried about moving forward. Um, is going to Ohio State next week. And rightfully so, because they haven't beaten the Buckeyes since 2016, and they haven't won in Columbus since 2011. So, 63 nothing in the meantime. Uh, your final score, Penn State defeats UMass. So... Thanks for tuning in and listening. And I guess that'll do it for myself, your host, Encyclopedia Sports, uh, Coen Luke 96, live right here on YouTube. So thanks for tuning in and listening. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below. Hope you're ready next week uh, for more culture ball, Penn State, live watch long reactions. And as I'll travel to Ohio State, take on the Buckeyes. But in the meantime, of course, apologies to Matt Damon, uh, but we ran out of time. As uh, Penn State wax UMass. I mean, you, you think about it. I mean, shit. Penn State, they would have played the likes of, you know, say Harvard or any of the pro teams in Boston, for God's sakes, whether it be the Bruins, Celtics, Red Sox, or Patriots. Um, probably would have been a better game. I mean, shit. I mean, a couple of UMass alums in uh, Neil Huntington and Ben Sherrington from a former to a current Pittsburgh Pirate general manager and the uh, Miami Dolphins GM, Chris Greer. I mean, they probably would have done a better job of putting a fucking team together to to go up against Penn State, for God's sakes. Um, now, you got to give credit to UMass. You do. Joking aside, I mean, they, they were playing, you know, well early, but then, yeah, as somebody said in the chat earlier, you know, they'll play these bigger teams tough early, but then the full 60 just gets to them and then and they end up losing. They're one and seven now. They haven't won since week zero, which is late August. We're almost nearing Halloween, folks. So perspective. Um, but either way, you know, with all that being said, uh, I'm sure that Whitey Bulger would, would be happy that, that Penn State defeated his uh, home state team, uh, the UMass Massholes, um, sixty-three to nothing. Penn State defeats uh, Massachusetts today. So, um, thanks for tuning in and listening. As always, thanks for the support. Um, and uh, I'll see everybody next week. But um, as Penn State um, honored the legacy of those who came before them today with the generations of greatness, um, this homecoming weekend. I'll leave you with this as um, you know, Penn State once again defeats uh, UMass 63 to nothing uh, on homecoming um, this 2023 October the 14th fall Saturday before they gear up to go out to Ohio State take on the Buckeyes next week we are and of course I'll finish it for you Penn State but hopefully you said Penn State with me so um yeah, we are Penn State. We are Penn State. We are Penn State. And a, a big thank you. And, um, yeah, you're welcome to Penn State defeating UMass 63 to nothing once again. Your final score. Uh, this will be the final non conference game uh, of the season um, until the bowl game because our bowl edge went out 6 0. Um, and they're just. Now going to be getting in the thick of it, even though they've had some tough games already. This is when it really starts because you look ahead next week. They play at Ohio State. And that will be the game next week um, that everybody's talking about. Even though there is a, a plethora of good games um, overall next week. I mean, you have a top five, top six battle in the Big Ten with, with Penn State. 
and Ohio State as Penn State gets the homecoming dub, uh, 63 to nothing uh, over the UMass Minutemen. Um, as Paul Revere probably saw, oh shit. Here's uh, James Franklin's press conference, which we very rarely get to uh, hear while we're still on. I wonder how long they're going to play this. We'll see what he has to say, and then we'll sign off. I normally always watch this after the fact. But, yeah, like always, want to thank everybody for coming out and supporting, covering Penn State football. Yeah, the conditions. I mean, still probably at 100,000 stands. No shit, you don't say. Yeah, they did turn the ball over twice. You mess only once. Oh, that's what I want to do. Pull up some team stats. Yeah, they, they won everything for the most part. Top to bottom, left to right, up and down. I mean, yeah, credit to the defense. I mean, two back-to-back -back home shutouts. They had 28 first downs. The UMass is nine, and... Six of those, I think, were in the second half. They got to clean up the penalties, though. Six of 60, and they didn't win the time of possession. UMass came back and won that by five minutes. 32-58, 27-02. I mean, okay, well... They were trying to do something. You know, Penn State was just scoring real quick, I guess. Penn State, five consecutive games they've held their opponent under 100 yards rushing, I might add, too. UMass had 45 yards passing and 64 yards rushing. Good win. Appreciate it. Enjoy it. Our next opponent. He's not name-dropping Ohio State. Ohio State is the next opponent. Let's see if Corey Geiger gets asked a question. Why did you decide to have Daquan back deep receiving punts? Let's see what he says. Because Caden Saunders returns some punts too, but Daquan Hardy is going to be the punt return moving forward. Yeah, it's all about perspective. It's all about getting opportunities, you know, chances. I mean, they were they were trying to get this return game going, and they finally did. Yeah, they weren't explosive until today. I was just hoping for a decent return, and then they, they did get a decent return, but then they got two punter to touchdowns. So they're just giving them a chance and see if it worked. And by all means, you know, keep doing it because it sure as hell did. Day Day. Must be his nickname. More of a follow up now. Two part of question. Yeah, the tight ends. But then, yeah, Daquan Hardy making make plays defensively. It's going to change things for us. Issues for other people. Long nights trying to figure it out. We'll see if he can back that up. All right. 
as we listen to James Franklin's post-game press conference. It just popped up, it popped on, right as I was about ready to sign off. Okay, they they cut it. They only have him give the opening statement and then um, one question from the media before. He's still ta- currently speaking, talking, um, but Big Ten Network cuts it. I'll have to watch it as I always do uh, afterwards because um, they never live stream it, or else I would. Um, you know, just see what he'd say. Even though I know what he's going to say, you know, for the most part. Um, but, hey, one's a win, 63 nothing. <laughs> um, I mean, they could have scored 60 less and still would have been okay. But then everybody would be like, well, the fucking sky's falling. You know? wonder where Lou Holtz is at right now, too, by the way. If he's showing up next week. But, uh, um... Penn State was 7-9 on third down, 1-1 on fourth down. That's pretty damn good. Had 408, we'll say 409 uh, total yards. Since I feel like it. We are Penn State JVP forever. Um, yeah, 162-45 to 45 on the passing, 246-64 on the rushing uh, with the comparison. Um... Had six yards of rush, seven yards of pass. Total of, what, 15 penalties? Nine for 81 for UMass, six of 60 for Penn State. Still too much. You know, two turnovers. Didn't win the time possession. It was surprising. Um, but they won 63 to nothing, so. Um, I'll leave it at that. I said my piece. I don't want to keep repeating myself and continue to talk for another half hour, hour, two hours or so. I think we're going to go enjoy this win. Um, because it's it's going to get tough now. It's going to get tough. Um, as it should be. It's Big Ten football. But can they get over that hump? Well, we're all going to find out next week. So, we'll see. Of course, that's why they play the game. So, I don't pay for the field once more. Even though, as mentioned a little bit ago, I guarantee you, I know damn well, nobody's going to be giving them a chance. But they got to believe in themselves. they they got to, you know, put up some fight, some effort, you know, on their um, own part. They can't let you know, happen what's happened, you know, recently happened again. Um, to put it nice and easiest way. Because in the circles back, it's the same old, same old then at that point. Um, so, we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm not going to be surprised they go out there and win, but I'm not going to be surprised they go out there and lose either. You know, um, it's just, it's one of those that it's going to be a good game. It is going to be a good game. And I think truly with everything I've said, with the run game and stopping it and explosive plays and, you know, getting help on special teams as they did today and, you know, creating, capitalizing off of turnovers and not turning over themselves. And, you know, a big play, you know, or two here or there might, you know, win you the game. You know, you take your points while you can get them. Like, I think everybody might be, you know, thinking, you know, a shootout it very well could be. It could also be a low-scoring defensive showdown, but... Just overall, I think if Penn State's going to want to win next week, their defense is going to have to fucking win the game probably. Um, but they're one of the best, if not the best, fucking defense in the country right now. You know, their offense ain't too shabby either. Um, and then now they're getting help in, in, um, in special teams. Just hopefully they don't do anything stupid. You know, that's the thing when it comes down to it. Don't do anything stupid. Um, that could cost the game. 
because it might be, you know, one, two plays here or there, like I said, it might be the difference when it's all said and done. Um, see about the officiating. They'll probably bring back John O'Neill specifically just for this game. Um, for all we know, who knows? Um, but next week's game should be good, and then it'll you know set the course for the you know remaining part of the, the season. Um, as then you know they'll have two games in between there with Indiana and at Maryland before they host Michigan, and then Rutgers and then at Michigan State, which is a at a neutral site in uh, Detroit at Ford Field on Black Friday night before the Big Ten Conference Championship game and then uh, bowl season, potentially with the college football playoff. And um, The one set I did like that they showed off earlier, um, only two teams ever in history uh, to this point in the season, averaging 40 a game on offense and giving up uh, less than 10 on defense. Um is the 2001 Miami Hurricanes and the 2023 Pennsylvania Lions. And the U, to begin the season, yes, they came here and played right here uh, at Penn State to uh, open up the new expansion to Beaver Stadium uh, that night when Adam Talaferro walked onto the field. But at the end of the season, the U won the national championship. So I'm not saying anything other than that. So take it for a grain of salt, but stats don't lie and history repeats itself. So we'll see, like I said, come mid-January, you know, where we're at, but it's still October. It's October the 14th, next Saturday, October the 21st. Penn State plays at Ohio State, and that's all they should be worried about. And hopefully they go out and get the job done, but they might, they might not, for all we know. Who knows? But yeah, I'll leave you with that. So Thanks once again for tuning in and uh, listening. And as always, once more, I'm your host, Encyclopedia Sports, uh, Koei Luke 96 uh, signing off live right here on YouTube. So um, thanks for tuning in. Like, follow, subscribe on social media. Links in the description below. Um, see everybody. Hope to see everybody next week uh, for more college football Penn State. Live watch long reactions over on YouTube as they'll battle the Buckeyes of Ohio State. And uh, I'll have coverage next Saturday at noon live right here on YouTube. So. See everybody then, uh, but Penn State defeats UMass 63 to nothing uh, while wearing their Generations of Greatness uniforms on this homecoming Saturday to uh, get to 6 0 and become bowl eligible once more uh, before they go out to the shoe next week and battle the Buckeyes once more of Ohio State. So we are Penn State.